Okay, the, uh, it's February 11th. We are having the February Facilities Committee meeting. Uh, present are Lauren Small, Mike Wolf, Tamara Twardowski, Brian Doty, um, Casey, and uh, two members of the public. If you guys want to state your names for the record. Marcy Williams. And Tom Williams. Okay, and um, do we want to just let... So they don't have to sit here. We can let them go first. Is that okay? All right. Um, I asked Tom and Marcy to be here tonight. Um, as uh, the email I quickly sent you guys kind of last minute was, um, this is the couple that is look, 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 looking to rent the gymnasium here. Um, and our fee schedule and structure is kind of all over the map. Um, they have, they're, they're looking to do a, uh, a program here, um, self-defense, karate jiu-jitsu and he'll, he'll be able to explain more of, of what he does um, I really don't have a, a number to give them you know for fees so they can start doing their business plan so I thought it was good for them to come here and exp you know you can put a face to a name and then they can also kind of quickly explain to you what what their anticipated you know growth is and 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 what they're lo looking for from us um, and then that way we can go back to Mary Beth or the, the school board and say hey you know Here's what they want. You, know, you guys, as a committee, can discuss it and say, you know, we, we feel, you know, this, and okay. then we can come back to them and and because uh, we we've been back and forth a bunch of times and mm -hmm. I, I just I hate being like I don't know I, I don't have that answer for you <laughs> yeah. you know so I figured right. let's let's get get them here and, and okay. they can do you know let you know what's good. going on so I'll give them the floor. Okay. We put together some paperwork just to kind of give you an overview of what the program's about, what we think is kind of the Sure, if you just want to come up and hand them out, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay. So we're pretty informal. So. Informal so it just kind of yeah. a lot of. Yeah. I know, it's like full yeah. chairs, so that's yeah, way you far back. Move up here, too, if, if you want. I mean, there you go. Thank you. You know, we don't, you don't have to be out in, out in the outfield there either. Essentially, I mean, it kind of gives you an overview. Um, Celtic Spirit Martial Arts is, is the name of the LLC that we're just starting out. I mean, this is ground level. Tom's been involved in World Tung Sudo Martial Arts, Tang Sudo, for 15 years. 15 years, and he's currently a third degree black belt. Um, started with our daughter as kind of a, a father daughter thing to do and it just kind of took off from there. He fell in love with it. He's been teaching for years and has always wanted to start his own studio. Um, this location seemed to be a, a really good spot and that's how we came to this point. Um, essentially, the, the program itself, although it's martial arts, I think it brings a lot more to the community. It's, it's a great physical outlet, but there's a lot of involvement with respect to focus on family, family, family relationships, respect, honor, courage, you know, all, all the positive things that in building character in children. Um, there's a lot of positive with respect to, you know, in today's world, we kind of need to know a little bit of self-defense, sadly, as hard as that is to admit. It is the case. Uh, there's a lot of bullying going on. It's a great program to help supplement anything that the district is doing with the children as far as bull bullying is concerned. Um, it just has a kind of a good all-around focus. It's great for children who aren't necessarily involved in more uh, sports like soccer. or they, they just aren't necessarily in that direction as far as their athletics. It's really good for that as far as young children. It really helps them to gain a, a sense of themselves and focus and listening and self-respect and those type of things. It's great for their balance and their, um, as far as their, their physical movement, which is a lot, of a lot of times that's really not looked at. So with the younger kids, you know, it's fun in that respect. Um, and I think the, the greatest thing that, happen, that I get from it is watching a student come in as a white belt and watching them grow, not just in Tung Sudo, but in their development as a person. Um, 
getting the, for instance, our, our class starts off, it's yes sir or no ma'am. It's not yes or yeah or whatever right. kids say. It's yes sir, yes ma'am. They answer a question, they, if you ask them a question, they have to answer. Um, and, and I work closely with the parents because the only one that knows better who their kid better than, is their parents. So I want to know when I start off a class or a news person comes in, I want to know what that kid what makes that kid tick. I want to know his weaknesses, his strengths. I will work on his weaknesses to get him up to the level of his um, up to his strengths. Uh, basically, with World Tongue Sudo, I've been a member for, like Marcy said, 15 years. Um, the person who introduced us to it was Grandmaster Shin, who came over from Korea in '68. A little bit about him: he was Chuck Norris's first instructor. Uh, this is a well-known; it's worldwide. Um, once they get established, and he, uh, they or we offer that that they can join the association. This will give them. Tournaments, they can come to tournaments, um, and there's no contact. It's not, there's going to be a little bumping here and there, but it's not all out like Taekwondo is where it's full contact. We try to keep it, especially with adults that join, we try to keep it light so there's n everybody can go to work and school the next day. <laughs> so, I, like I said, I've been doing it for 15 years, um, and I got started with my daughter. My daughter and I would grow up, I work, as Casey will know, we're in, I was in, I'm in construction during the day. Uh, I'm up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I don't get home till 4.30 during the day. So my daughter and I were going in the opposite directions. So I saw this at a Y one day and I said, what do you think, you and I do it? Now I said, why don't try it, look at it. Well, the other, the other thing about that is that our daughter has a very mild cerebral palsy. So she's doesn't affect her cognitively at all. It's just a left side slight toe walk and whatnot. So she, sports wasn't really something she could and really participate in. Nobody wanted her on their team, that kind of thing, you know, it was, which is a rough road. She did phenomenal in this program, which is another avenue. I mean, I think that for, for children that might have slight disabilities and whatnot, it's, it's an incredible opportunity as well, which is another whole door that could potentially open as it grows and as we And they forward. grow at their own pace. They're not in competition with the next kid next to them. I, I had, uh, for example, I taught at Octorera High School. Um, and I had a, a young lady who was a little heavy set, And I had a young man that was, he was, he was gifted. I mean, he was, he picked up stuff like this. They started the same day. She said, well, I can't do what he's doing. I said, I don't expect you to. I want you to do your best. And I asked, talked to her mom as she lacked confidence. Her grades are not doing in school. I said, okay, I'll work on that. And by the second month, what I did is we have forms where it's a set of group things that you do. And I had her come up in front of the class because she knew the form. I said, you come up in front of the class. You're going to run the class tonight. She said, I can't do that, Mr. Lyons. And in my classroom, I have the word can't with a big arrow flashed through it. There's no such thing as can't. She came up. I said, I'll stand right behind you. I'll guide you if you need help. She got through the whole thing. And from that point on, her mom said her grades started to go up. And she built confidence. When I left Dr. Era, I moved up to Lancaster to teach. She followed me up there. Um, that's not saying nothing about me. That's her having confidence in what, how I'm helping her develop. It's just, it's nice to see the value, that, the different effects that it has on the children. It's not just a sport. Right. It's, it's all encompassing. It affects their, the building of their esteem, their strength, their focus, and, and decisions that they make. The uh, World Tongue Sudo Association also, um, every month, if you have students, you find out from them, and they have to show you proof. You know, I'm an A student this month, I'm a B student this month, and they receive recognition. Um, they have to bring they a actually, report card into me. They actually send a certificate um, to the student that says, that names them, and gives, you know, the information. Um, I guess, and, and I, I mean, I don't really, I don't know if anybody else has questions about the programs or, or, or has concerns about the program. I mean, I know my daughter and my nephews did 
Taekwondo when they were kindergarten first. And I, it was very schools first, you obey your parents, it, and they helped work on those things. So I, I, I do know, and I think it's good for kids that aren't really athletically inclined because mm-hmm. they don't have to be. So, I, I mean, I, I see the value in the program. I guess for us, what I would be looking at, to try to find out is, um, I don't know if you've, have they seen the facility yes. at all? Really? So I don't, what what area were you looking to use? You know, how, were you looking to use things uh, at five nights a week or two nights a week or yeah, that kind of thing? Essentially, the, the, the plan was two nights a week, and it's going to be from a window of possibly six to eight, six to eight thirty, or like it's only a matter of a two to three hours in those of those two nights. You know, each okay. night. And um, what would you be looking to use the gym or the gym? Yeah, okay. the gym. The gym. Um, Obviously, would need access just to the bathrooms. Yeah. Right, and they're right, right there at the gym, so. That's it. Uh, um, it wouldn't. Would it have to be? It, would it, it wouldn't interfere with me? Like if we had meetings here, then right? Because they would be in a different area. Um, but they'd basically need blood in, blood locked. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what we would need. Well, and, and as wise. part of that, and I'm going to be bringing this up later on uh, for. Build, 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 building checks like on the weekends and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we do have second shift custodians over here at AEC that, you know, and that's something we would have to work out logistically wise for for the weeknights. Uh, you know, the weekends, uh, M&G security could 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 open for them and you know lock up and stuff like that. So, you know, it's it's kind of and. That conversation, and, and there, there's also some ideas of, of doing some possibly some things differently with the admin offices here, uh, possibly doing a phones and maybe locking some doors and stuff like that. So and people can get in and out. Correct, and we're not worrying about them having access to admin. River Rock would really, would be locking up all their classrooms, so really, you know, that they would have the gym, the bathrooms. Yes, the hallways would be open to a point. But there again, that you know, would we have to have coverage here? And, and I guess that's the question that, that you know, because that <coughs> entails costs for us, which then um, unfortunately entails costs for them as well. well you know, so I just I, and that's kind of, you know, I wanted you to meet them and, and, right. and kind of see it, and then you know. Well, um, what we excuse me, what sure. we did at Octorera, um, and I taught for my one of my instructors at Octorera, and what they they had again, if this was at the high school, they had custodians there or at the middle school, which was right next door. Um, and by the t- when I got there at 5 o'clock, the doors were still open from after school. And then what we did, we made sure they came right into the gym. Uh, if they went to the bathroom, I would have somebody escort them or their parent escort them. Because usually the, here's what happens, usually the kids get involved, but because the parents are sitting around watching, the parents- probably two or three months later, they get involved also. Um, and then what happened, again, we don't send any kid, child out of the room without supervision. If it, what I do usually do is I'll have them do whatever, calisthenics or whatever, and then I'll walk to the door here um, and, and what, wait for yeah, the children to get out of the bathroom. The access point. I mean, that's, that's what we okay. did it off to Rara, so. Yeah, it's not like they're going to be running loose. They, that's, that won't yeah. happen. Yeah, I think I mean I I from my perspective, and I'll ask the rest of the committee. But I don't I don't foresee a problem with it. I I think it's a great idea. It would just be a matter of us trying to figure out what what our costs would be and making sure that those costs are covered, and maybe a little extra depending on you know. I mean I that would be my thought process. What arrangements like have you guys seen in other in other school districts that you think would work out here? There. Honestly, we haven't. We were in search. Right. When we got the call that this might be available. Okay. I haven't really spoken to a whole lot of people. We've been trying to kick around in our in our idea, you know, what could potentially be the ideal situation. What we've come up with is if we could possibly have a small base. We're just getting started. I mean, we might be in there with no kids, or you know, it just depends. Right. Um, and then what we thought was, after a certain number, we could give a per dollar per student based on you know the actual show up of, of the students, which would potentially 
increase that base right. as things grow, um, because initially it's just going to really be all cost for us. Right. Um, well, and, um, yeah, I mean, and I don't have, I mean, for me personally, I, and I, we'd have to talk about this, if there's other stuff going on here um, on nights that you're here, and then obviously the doors open and close too. Um, not that there's a ton of meetings here, I guess, anymore, but certainly Mondays there's meeting and, you know, so. I mean, we're only talking five hours a week so there's not a lot of hourly involvement so yeah we're basically looking probably and it, it's up to you Monday or Wednesday night that would be the two nights preferably we were hoping though that we could have flexibility if there's a snowstorm and we can't have a Monday night like if, if it needs to be shipped or a holiday falls on a Monday and but we'd be in contact with you adjustment, but it on a, be a regular contact. basis. Those two classes, would they be a separate group of kids, or would it be two? The same? Actually, three different classes. Yeah, what, okay. what I usually time. do is I do a little dragons class. It's okay. a half hour, because that's about all I can keep their attention. Right. And it's five to seven years old. Okay. And then I go from eight years old to 13 years old is kids class. And then... 13 and above is adult class. But in the beginning, I will be mixing them up just because I don't until know what we we're going to get. Until you okay. the size of the group. And, and how many kids do you anticipate? Like, how many total? Do you, like, it, it it's, has, it it's, has it's, a huge potential. It has so, a huge yeah. potential. Because my instructor, the size of the just, my instructor's been in business, my instructor now up in Lancaster, he has a storefront. Okay. He has over. Over a hundred black belts. Wow. Okay. And that's all. And that's just black belt. He yeah. has. He has a second degree. We have third ten degree, ten gup stu gup belts, which is white belt through blue. Okay. Blue belt's a black belt candidate. Okay. He has to fill some requirements before he can test for black belt. Right. Once that, uh, like I said, and then you start from black belt, you go up from first to eighth. Okay. Um, but he, like I said, he's got. I teach class on usually Monday and Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday nights for them, and I usually have 30 to 35 students in each class. Okay. And I, I say, teach what's your people. maximum student to instructor ratio? At first, it, first it's only going to be me, but I do have a lot of black belts that have been offering to help me out. And that's, that's the beautiful part. part of our association is there's studios all around especially in this region, Region 8. Um, a perfect example, we're gonna have a tournament over at Twin Valley, Twin Valley High School in a couple weeks. There's over 300, 500, probably 450 to 500 competitors. And they're coming from, from Delaware, some in Jersey, some in uh, Western PA. Uh, to answer your question, I usually, if, if I'm the only one here, I've been doing it for a long time. I can pretty much go from probably 20 to 25 students without a problem. And the, and the beautiful thing about martial arts is what I'll do is I start people off and I teach them as I go. And some people might step up and want to be instructors. So I prep them to become instructors yeah. and to teach, teach the younger kids, you know, the younger white belts, green belts, depending on what their rank is. What is what does somebody pay? Like, what would a student pay? They pay monthly per class. Monthly. They, It'll be monthly. Monthly. It'll be monthly. What's that typically go for? The the range is probably averages somewhere around ninety seven to ninety nine. Some studios are a over lot a lot more expensive. Wow, we're uh, trying over a hundred dollars a month. Yeah, so okay. we're trying to keep it. We're trying to keep it around the ninety ninety seven. And if they go dollars. automatic, we're punishing or. Then yeah. it's going to be then eighty. We're going to, going to drop a, a another. Ten dollar deductible. We're going to try to. And any military families or that elderly or whatever we military we, firefighters. We cut a break on that. Sure. Five percent discount to. Got paid sixty five, but that was twenty years ago. Um, <laughs> uh, just like exam, my instructor up in Lancaster <laughs> is charging one hundred and thirty five a month. Wow. And he's that busy. Yeah, he's swamped. Um, 
as far as you know, prospecting for students, right? Right. You guys have a plan to advertise this. Like I see, you guys have this this flyer here. Well, that that was the other question that we had. Um, we wanted to find out if we would be able to distribute anything like that within the school district to try to get the children from the schools, as well as we're going to market in the areas, the neighborhoods. Yeah. That that, I mean, then that would be a superintendent question. I, I mean, we do have a policy on that, I think. I don't know what it is. And, I mean, I know that yeah. they used to send stuff years ago home. I, I haven't had a kid in elementary school in 15 years, so I don't know what comes home. So yeah, that's just it. We didn't know we what don't was know. going on. Yeah, I don't we know what. I'm not sure off the We weren't sure about head. signage, yeah. if we, you know, if we were going to be able to put, like, a stick-in sign or something, if that would be permissible if we'd be allowed to do that when honestly that's kind of stuff we'd have to check with the township too because i don't i want to do anything you well, know i don't want to say i don't know what their regs at. are but um and the full board but um i think i mean it's i mean for me i think i i kind of i mean do you have more questions i think it's a matter of us trying to figure out where we need to be with with and charging you just guys. for that 99 and if you break that down it's not. It's, it's not. It's about thirteen dollars a class. Right. Dollars a class. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, we don't, we're not it's looking at it like we're getting rich. <laughs> and that, and you're right. I'm not in it to get rich. I love teaching kids and teaching adults, just to see the progress. And basically, what here's how I feel that I'm successful is that when the kid comes back to me like this girl did and say, Mr. Lyons, thank you for helping me out. You helped me get through. Yeah. And, and I've had that. And the parents see that you know this has made an impact. In, that in I was invited to the parents' parent. wedding, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I only have sorry, one sorry. question. Like, okay. Just share one concern. The question I have is like, what kind of are you going to bring a mat in, like a big mat? I will have a mat. We got to use the, the the gym floor, but when we do rolling and stuff, I will bring in my own mat. Yes. Okay. And that was the other thing. There's going to be waivers involved, obviously, those type of things, and any language. That the school district would want us to add into those, obviously, we would go ahead and we do have a, a, a well, and we have sure. Daniel Boone School District being omitted from any, yeah. I mean, that's just I mean, they're going to get hurt, a, you know, if they're jumping around, somebody can twist an ankle, sure. I mean, that's the most I've ever seen. Um, that's the most I've ever seen, and I do, I'm first aid certified, I have all my um, PA um, clearances, um, so. Yeah, all his background checks and whatnot are yeah, up to date. I mean, I, I don't, I don't question that you're, you know, responsible, you know, people that would, you know, not abuse the building or agreement we have. That's not an issue. It sounds like a great family activity. You know, um, the only other concern I have is, you know, with that agreement with the Amity Township as far as this use, mm -hmm. and if, you know, if there's a lot of car traffic back right. and forth, would they force that? Right. That, uh, right away, um, expansion. Okay. And I, I was going to. That, that's, yeah. that's really my only. I, I was going to call question. them anyway to talk to them about some other things, and that was one of them. So, I mean, I can ask that. At what point are they? Yeah. Is that are I they going to trigger that? that yeah. Yeah. The, the the driveway coming into one way in. Right. Um, there was one one they. Long story short, any renovations here would cause that to become two ways. They did a renovation here. The township has said you're okay for right now. So their question, more or less, is: Does renting that gym now say to the township, "Hey, now we're a business"? You know, will they then make us make that a two-two lane highway, you know, a two-two lane driveway? I mean, it's a two-way driveway. Right. Because so, that just to kind of give you a little that's thing. that it's that's one of those yeah, things that at whatever point we have to do that, it's not feasible for us to probably rent because yeah, <laughs> that could cost possibly. six figures. You know, and easily. So, um, so that's something we'd have to check on. Um, we'd have to look at 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 the um, how we would open and close the building. So, I mean, I think there's some more for us to discuss. But I mean, I do appreciate you guys yeah, coming yeah. in. And I, I guess, so the most I can tell you at this point is we're not opposed to it. Okay. That we just have to do some homework on our end. I think it's fine. It's everything out of your control. I think I'm yeah. comfortable with me and recommending it. So it's all things that out of our control. Okay. Thank, you. Okay. thank you very much. Thank Thanks. You. Thank Appreciate you guys. It. No thank problem. You. And if you have any questions, uh, Casey has her email. Just shoot yeah. us an email. Okay, we can great. Get you any emails. <coughs>
Okay. Okay. Yeah, the phone numbers are their email. I got everything. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming out. Thank, Thank you very much. Sure. Um, more? No. Well, the Reserve Advisors Conference call the board had said there were some concerns raised about the reserve study, and I had contacted the Reserve Advisors. We had to pay the bill because we had a contact. But they're more than willing to schedule a conference call. But what I was suggesting is that the board submit their concerns so we could get talking, talking points to them fairness to them okay. of issues that we have a concern about and then we would schedule this conference call and work through hear their explanation for why they did what they did in certain areas so that's all I just want to keep it on the agenda so that we don't forget to do it okay well maybe what I can do is um when you report out report you out say people have concerns or to Brandon and and I'd, I'd kind of personally prefer to schedule that probably for March or April anyway so that we don't have weather right. issues that and <laughs> we Minnesota. don't know when we're doing it. And they're so. in where, Minnesota? It's something like something that, like yeah. That's Wisconsin. The, the, the parent they're company. Like, so yeah, they so. have their own weather issues, too. <laughs> I don't want to have to cancel that one last minute, so. Okay. Um, okay. Train contracts update. I, Casey and I had mentioned this before, and I just want to commend Casey for his jumping in i i had kind of started the ball rolling before case just as casey got here but uh, we had these contracts with train numerous contracts that technically were not uh, enforceable contracts because they had not been board approved and it was some big dollars we were looking at close to seven hundred thousand dollars over the 15 year period i think yeah. that we would have paid out for virtually nothing uh, hmm maintenance and valuation and things that basically say you're saving money. But nevertheless, sent it to the attorney, the attorney sent it to train, train threw up the white flag of surrender and said, yeah, you're right. Those, we've had a kind of a handshake agreement and they really aren't enforceable. However, we have done this and this. And as, as recently as, as Monday this week, Casey and I were on a conference call with, with the attorney and we're addressing some things. In their response, at this point, Train is saying for $23,000, we'll back away from this, and then moving forward, will just be time and material as needed uh, so Casey can order parts. Right now, they're playing hardball with us and saying, because you owe us all this money, Casey can't even order parts from it. They've got us locked out. They're just playing this silly game. So, At any rate, uh, part of it was three invoices for work that they alleged they did in August uh, on a verbal directive from Ken Smith, and then they didn't invoice this until January after they got the letter from our attorney. They said, oh, by the way, we forgot to invoice these because we couldn't reach Ken Smith. Well, give me a break. Ken was here in the middle of September. We know he was communicating with them, but nevertheless, Casey worked through those invoices and said, we probably owe this, but we don't owe this and just a lot of little issues. So bottom line is, it looks like we're gonna be able to walk away from the bulk of this for Great. in the neighborhood of 2022,000. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's where we're at on that. Nice. Um, security system in Tri-State Elevator. Jump in, Casey. Casey presented a whole bunch of stuff a couple months ago on various contracts. Yeah. Uh, Tri-State Tri Elevator is, uh, we're required by the state to have quarterly inspections of all of our elevator or any lift, lifting device for wheelchair ramps right. or, or whatever. We have seven locations, seven devices. Um, Tri-State Elevator was charging us $375 a quarter to do these inspections. Now, per total, total. total. quarterly fee, so you're talking 1500 bucks. Yeah. Now, the kicker is their normal hourly rate is $215 an hour per technician. So, if they're charging us $375 to inspect seven facilities. We're getting a hell of a deal. Right. We're getting nothing done. Oh. They're coming in, they're kind of doing a visual, yeah, everything looks intact. So you, um, 
drive the, by and stuff. Uh, here I was thinking we were getting a great deal. Nothing's <laughs> leaking. <laughs> the ironic part was they were here three weeks ago. I was not aware of it. They didn't call us, didn't tell us or anything. Um, I happened to be at the high school when the guy came in. He came in with a satchel on his shoulder, walked in, took the cover off the elevator pump, went, closed it, and left. He was there 10 minutes. Never operated the, the elevator, never rode the elevator, never checked the doors or nothing. So. Are they signing off on these, though? Uh-huh. So if something would happen? They're just going to say at the time of we were here, it was fine. Okay. So no maintenance is being performed. Um, Red and Elevator there again is a local company. Tri-State Elevator's down, I forget, they're, they're down Malvern Newtown somewhere. Newtown Square. Yeah. Um, they're one of the big boys. Uh, so there again, they want the repairs, they want the replacements, you know, they, they just, they just, they're doing this just to keep their name here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Red and Elevator, I had them come in, um, I, I know the guys, I used all your local school districts use them. Um, they came in and they said, Casey, you know, we can do it for, at the cheapest, about 900 bucks a quarter. Now, granted, it's a lot more money, but there again, they are going to service the, the seals. They are going to service the tracks. They are going to service the doors. They are going to ride the elevator. They are going to make sure everything works. The other part of this is we had an aide get stuck in the elevator over Monocacy about a month ago. And all, right in, of course, there again, I wasn't calling Tri-State Elevator because I would have to pay from them from Newtown Square. We didn't have a contract with Redden Elevator. Redden Elevator still had a guy here within an hour and a half because they knew somebody was in the elevator. Came here and they said, who's doing your maintenance? I said, well, Tri-State. They said, look, and I mean, the, the track was just never, I mean, nothing was ever maintained. This is a serviceability, a liability issue for us. Um, there again, it's a contract that Kenny had signed. Yes, Rain Elevator is more expensive, but it's money well spent, you know, because I, I know that, yes, they're getting service. Um, so um, we're looking to pretty much do the same thing with Tri-State to send them a letter and say, hey, have a nice day, you know. But there again, I'll be asking the board to approve a contract that is almost three times as much money per quarter, but it's something... You know, that needs to be done right. It's not something I can do. I'm not certified to do it. Right. You know, yeah. we, we have to pay that. And rain elevator is $206 an hour as well. And they say, Casey, think about it. 206 bucks an hour. We're doing this at our cost. I mean, we're, we're, we're doing this to build a relationship with the school district, you know, so on and so forth. And there again, they were here within an hour, and they never did one, one stitch of work ever at the Boone School District. So that shows you the merit of, of, of the company you're dealing with oh, How well. much was it? Nine? It's roughly about, it's, I don't have it on me. I grabbed a bunch of folders walking the door, but it's, it's, about, it's about $900 a quarter. Lauren may even have it. I don't know. $885 per quarter. Yeah. Well, and I don't know what you guys think. You get what you're paying. That includes preventive I mean, I, That is the preventive, quarterly preventive maintenance. So Whereas we were just paying Tri-State for inspection. For, seven, yeah. for, for, for basically 28 oh, Inspections. Well, why can't we just or, hold know. them accountable to their contract? Because they're going to say they came here and they did what they're required to do by, by the state. See, if you don't have a checklist saying right. that you, you, yeah. you did that all, you have ten Statement things to word. do, and then they have to they have to initial or check that they did all those things. It could mean. Anything. Are we going to yeah. have that with Reading? It's like a, exactly what they're going to do. Standard word. coverage: cleaning and oiling machine, motor controller, lubricating bearings and guides, necessary minor adjustments at time of regular exams. Furnishing necessary lubricants, rope preservatives, and wiping materials. I don't. I, I don't have a problem with with mm -mm. with that. That's you a safety it's, issue. It's just, it's yeah. just such a small, a small amount of money. Right. Yeah. yeah. The only thing, I'll just throw this out there. I don't care if you do it or not, but I can see somebody saying it. Um, you could go back to, and I'm not saying we go with Tri-State, but you could go back to Tri-State and say, what would you charge us? To service it like it's like that, you know. Like it, their make, letter says that's what they're doing, but they're not. Okay. I mean, flat out. They're oh not. well, if they say they're, if they have, if we have it in writing from them that they're going to do this stuff and they're not, then it's a breach of contract. Yeah. 
I, I look yeah. at it, it's, it's yeah. just a small amount no, of No, I agree. I, I don't mean, have the justification is exactly the result of what happened. What? We had somebody right. stuck in the elevator. Yeah. Right. Because the, the person, yeah. somebody got stuck in there. I, I don't know if it was because they didn't do the, the regular maintenance. It was just the, sw it was, it was the switch not being made because things weren't being lubed correctly. You know, they came in, they cleaned everything up, and then the door yeah. worked fine. So. I don't have a problem recommending it. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a peace of mind for me <laughs> as yeah. a facility director knowing that it's done correctly. Right. Their agreement is very vague. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know, I guess if somebody asked, we could tell them, but I think we just present the contract to, yeah. as, a recommended, yeah. as a recommended contract approval. And if somebody says, well, what were we paying or who were we using, then you bring it. But otherwise. <laughs> Yeah. Don't ask, if they don't ask. Yeah. Because <laughs> what I did was, Tri State's expired November of of fourteen, but they required I think a sixty day or ninety day notice with certified letter, and they more or less wrote me a letter back saying, guess what, you didn't you didn't cancel within the timeline, so screw you. Jeez. Give us ten thousand dollars or something like that. It was. It, I forget what the letter. That's it's more or less what the letter said. <laughs> you know, go pound sand. Have a nice day. You know. Wow. So. Yeah. Well, then, does I mean, is Brian recommending then that we wait till no, the end of the? Brian didn't get involved in this one. Okay, I mean, do do we well, think we'll, we have to wait till November or? No, we can no. cancel at any time. Yeah. I mean, I think well. we argue that they're not performing the service that yeah. they're supposed to be. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or we just keep paying them three hundred seventy nine bucks for we'll, two more we'll, quarters. We'll put it on the agenda for March. Just get rid of them. And if they give us yeah. their bag, then we have to use the attorney. But well, yeah, he'll cost you more. You might just That's maybe right. send him a check for three seventy nine. Oh, yeah, that. Or, <laughs> or if, it, if it does happen, then they have to notify us when they come, or nobody lets them in the building. Right. And then they somebody stands behind them, and make right. sure they right. do every one of those things to every one of those. Right. Lists. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And the security system. Security system is uh, another Ken Smith contract with uh, Select Security. This is high school, right? Yeah, high school. We had. The original install for the cameras, 44000 And then there was these uh, renewals. They're going to cost us. 458 I think, a yeah. month. Yeah. Or five, five, I forget what it is. It's 485 a month yeah. for uh, service, and they weren't doing the service. S supposedly, when they were called in the past, they could never fix anything. So, they are paid, I don't know if it's quarterly, I think it's every quarter uh, we receive a bill from them right. uh, for 14 or 1500 bucks. Um, and it got to the point where nobody at the high school even calls them. So here the school district has been paying them for for as long as that contract is for nothing. What's, uh, what, I was going to ask you, what does the contract cover on security cameras? Well, there's, I mean, they're, at this point, they're so cheap. Yeah. yeah. Why would well, you? And, and I'll be honest. We actually asked Ken Smith about that a year ago, a year and a half. Well, because somebody could questioned the DVR. The is that the one with the DVR services or something? I mean, the the, the, the the setup they have was so antiquated. I mean, we. I looked at that. I saw that equipment like 15 years ago. Because uh -huh. I thought and, he said uh, like they came in and they read that they something with a DVR and then they downloaded it and then they wiped it or because we questioned that a year ago. And it still doesn't work. Yeah. And it's and, and that and that system, I have upgrade costs as well um, okay. as as part of this whole discussion. But um, what 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 they have up there as as Mike said is 15 year old technology. Apparently I mean, it, it works. Well, everything's going void now. Yeah. It's so much cheaper. <laughs> I mean, as long as you know, as long as uh, you know Scott Scott can you know right. support it on the network. A lot of this stuff you don't have to. It's yeah. all POE point. You know, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Scott's got a plan. He's talking um, about of, of making it. Uh, because I had I had so priced we... out a I had a spec out a camera for Ken when we had the um, vandalism down at the ball field, and it was a it was a Wi-Fi void. Yeah, um, infrared camera, huh. and you know it was pricey. It was like fifteen thousand, but I mean you didn't have to. There was no installation costs. Basically, you put it up, point it just like we have our our audio system down there. Hmm. Um, it was it was a nice setup, and it would scan the field and dwell on movement. So it's pretty nice. The bottom That's line is cool. it's another contract like training that we can get rid Ken of. Smith find no board approval for this contract. Yeah. 
So yeah. have we sent them a letter? This is going to the yeah, attorney. Okay. With your direction. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let's do it. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I hate to say it, and I'm not trying to screw anybody, but if if the if the contracts weren't done legally, and we don't have to pay them, and we don't need to pay them. That's the yep. <laughs> well, see, and, yep. and that goes back to having a list of all the all contracts, the contracts that are out there, when right? When they're yeah. expiring, and, and so you know in advance. That, right. Hey, this not like an auto renews like uh, the, Everything. the one before. <laughs> like right. our, we don't have a system that ha that holds this information that you could go look it up. Yeah, we do. It's, it's sitting right here. Yeah. Which, yeah. They're working when, on it. When we get the invoice, I, I make a phone call. Were, were you at the meeting when I when I explained how I found a business card from First Security? Uh, I don't remember. But. I, I found a I found a card from First Security. So uh, Security First with their ID number on it, with our ID number on it. I didn't know we used them, so I called them. Now I, I, the people who own it, I grew up. I mean, I've known him since I've been little. So I called the office and I said, can I talk to Lindell Klein? Well, I forget her current name or her married name. I said, yeah. Lindell goes on the phone. I said, Lindell, it's Casey. She goes, yeah, how are you doing? I said, do we do business with you at Daniel Boone School District? And she goes, I don't know. Let me check. She goes back on the phone. She goes, well, yeah, you do. So we do. She goes, yeah. I said, okay, where? She said, well, you have a security system that we monitor at the high school and the middle school. I said, really? She goes, yeah, you paid it up front. It's six hundred dollars a year, or, or twelve hundred dollars a year. I forget what the number was. It's like about a thousand bucks. I said, huh, that's pretty interesting. I said, because I didn't even know we we used it. So I made some phone calls, and they said, oh yeah, we don't use those security systems. So we're paying them to monitor the twenty-four so hour for a phone for for a response, but we never turn them on. We never activate them. Well, I think that was weren't they charged? I think I remember Ken talking about this one time where. They got charged. We got charged. I think every time a, a call or something was registered. And oh, it's with the, with and it was, if you get we the false getting, alarm, you we get charged after and, three a year or three. Yeah. Of, Plus, that's the six, police six, and, yeah. and, the, and the fire company. But this is the actual yeah. monitoring company that that the call goes to, and then they dispatch the police and stuff. But, right, but I'm wondering if we turn we don't turn it on because they were they were getting false alarms. That's possible. We were getting just, charged. But, but there again, we're paying right. a company to monitor a system we don't use. So. Right. So just stop. So paying that, to answer your question, that's how we check what what expires and what. When he gets a bill, because we get a bill. And What's the system moving forward? That's the old system. <laughs> You have a spreadsheet. Well, he's that keeping a, That's what a, I have now uh, that I've been. Well, as we find stuff, uh, Sandy is managing the central repository for all contracts. Okay. In, the, in her office. Okay. Okay. Had another one last week. Casey emails me and says, "Hey, what's the deal with M and G Security at the high school?" We got a question. And I said, "Who's M and G Security?" <laughs> so. I head down to the office, get the contract for M&G Security. Don't have one. So I go over to Caleb and I said, okay, this, this is going to be the last one. You're paying these people? Show me why you're paying. Yeah, based on Just what? Just because we have. I said, that's not good enough for me. Contact the vendor, see if we can get a copy of their current contract. Monday, get an email from the owner of the company with a blank contract on an email saying, if the business manager wants a contract, I don't have a problem with having a contract. This is this is what I'd like to have. This, the email came to the payables office. I'm thinking, yeah, I want to pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year. I want a contract. You got to understand, you're using them for athletic events, yeah. football, whatnot. Probably dances, I would. Yeah, guess. whatever. That's controlled by the athletic facilitator requesting those services. But you have three individuals, eight hours a day, in the building, 180 days a year. At the year. high school. Right? Yes. The security guards? $21.50 an hour. They don't do anything, from what I kind of understand. But there's but no contract. You say good kids. morning to me every time I go in into something. Oh. But there's no contract. So I look at this email, and I'm thinking, I don't believe he's saying this. If he wants a contract, I'm okay with a contract. <laughs> of course I want a contract. So I picked up the phone, and I call. The guy answers the phone. Says this so this is the only. Oh, he says I'm, I'm at the front desk in your high school right now. I'm working today. I said, okay, tell, tell me more about this arrangement. And uh, he said, yeah, this works out really good for us because they cut us back on the analytics side, but this makes up for it. He said, all right, 
but I think you misunderstood. I don't want a blank contract. I want your current contract. Oh, he said, I've never had a contract. How long have they been here? I said, well, how long have you been here? He said, well, 15, 20 years in for athletics and two years here in the building. I said, no contract? No. I said, all right, well, I'll take care of getting a contract. I said, who, who told you the bill is twenty-one fifty an hour? I'm not going to tell you who told me, but nevertheless, <laughs> been winging it. We're, I'm talking did, about. Mike, did we bring them in when the whole thing happened with the, with like the, two years ago with the bags yeah. and when we had to search the that's, bags? So Rich Martino, right. he was in the crowd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We did. We, that's when we brought that was in. That's here. My daughter was a senior. And somebody yeah. from because the teachers. Another Teachers do the in initial inspection, but then they, 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 they're at the entrance. But my understanding is we don't do bag checks anymore. No. So why do we have them here? They still are the security. They're, st they're still at the security desk right when you go well, into high school. I don't well, know. What do we the need them there for? So they, in high school. Well, but what, I mean, do we really what spurred, need what I mean, that's, I guess, a whole was, other conversation. But. I was on the phone yeah. with Union Township about another thing, which I'm going to bring up. I just made myself a note to remind me, which is why Lauren's laughing. <laughs> The lady at the township said, I just had a very disgruntled resident here screaming and yelling at me about your crossing guards. I almost hit him. The, the woman's telling the person at the township. The crossing guard doesn't have a stop sign. All of the M&G guy does is have an orange vest on. He stands out there and puts his hand up. Oh, is he an well, M&G guy, too? Yeah, so yeah, this lady right. almost hit him. Apparently so, one of the three. They're one of the three. So she went to the township and said, hey, if you have a crossing guard, they're supposed to have certain certain placards on them and you know certain stuff and and and, and, a, and a sign you know a stop sign so i called back here and said where's their contract and what do they have to provide just to see if i have to provide it if it's in the contract that the school district's providing the stuff or do they provide it so that's what's there again that's another one of those something came up we're trying to we're trying to figure out what what they are. Well, we don't do things on a handshake. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're trying right, to you get dollars here. So the point is, yeah. I'm, I forwarded that email on to Brian Subers to review because it doesn't speak to clearances and all the rest. Yeah. It should be. So, and I said, Brian, have you ever been involved with this? Because oftentimes Brian will say, Yeah, I did this, or I, or he has notes uh, on yeah. agendas and. And he called me back yesterday and he said, no. I said, do it. So it's going to appear on the March calendar well, to get a, an approval so that the board knows. So you'll be, have an opportunity to discuss. Well, I, say, I, need them, I think need that's them. a whole other conversation that needs yeah, to happen, but, but the high school principals probably need to. And you know what? Maybe we don't do anything until we get a new high school principal and get his input. Well, I'd just like to know the scope. I didn't know they were crossing guards. Well, I know there's crossing guards down there. I didn't know they were from. I didn't know they were from. The high school. You got the uh, guy. Yeah, they're out there directing traffic, so you don't drive up where the buses are, so they right. direct you to the back. Okay, that's the only one that I knew of. There's, there's three of them. They have one on 345 at the main entrance. They have one at the bottom, at the at the, the, the kids' lot. I'll call it the kids' lot to force yeah. everybody into the kids' lot. And then the other one, I believe, is either walking the property during the time coming in, but then they walk the hallways and they have one guy at the front desk. What I've done... And I don't know that you need to pay a crossing guard twenty one fifty an hour. There's probably people who volunteer to do that. <laughs> You're not going to get somebody to volunteer for it. No. You, you, want somebody, you want somebody, that's their job. You do, but, yeah. but I mean, crossing guards don't make twenty one fifty an hour in Montgomery County, I don't think. I, at least not the ones I've seen out. Well, while we're on the M&G, well, you're paying, they're they're you're paying the company twenty one fifty. Yeah. You're paying the employee probably True. $10. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, they're probably doubling up on that. While we're just discussing M&G, one, one point I'd like to bring up is right now we're paying our head custodians to do building checks on the weekends. All right, so they get paid two hours each day on Saturday and Sunday, two hours for each day, so they get four hours a weekend for four buildings. And then Mark Kukuro gets three hours because he does the building check over there and, and the building check here. All right, so when you run the numbers, uh, it costs us about, I forget, I, don't, I didn't grab it. Um, More than 21.50. It's, it's a lot of money. Um, yeah. I think it's roughly about eight hundred dollars. It's it's twenty seven. It's like twenty seven and a half hours pay. Hours that we're paying our staff to, to do it for a weekend. Per weekend, all right. 
Um, so if you throw a dollar amount of 30 bucks in there for our and staff, it's, it's 800 and some dollars. Um, I talked to M&G before this, not knowing they didn't have a contract with a high school, and about using them for building checks on the weekends. Um, he had mentioned that he could do it for about 30 bucks an hour, um, and we're looking probably five, six, maybe seven hours each day on a Saturday or Sunday to do it totally. So for roughly half the money, if not less than half the money, um, we could have them provide the building checks. And all they do in building checks is they walk in, you know, we would have a sign in the boiler room saying, hey, the boiler should be at this temperature, you know, this gate should read this. They'd make sure nothing's leaking, doors are locked, windows are closed, and that kind of stuff. So we're, we're looking anywhere between six to eight hours for a Saturday or a Sunday. The other thought I had was if we have an event at the high school or an elementary school, they can schedule their building checks around that event. So then we're not paying custodians so to come in and with, open up doors and stuff like that. What do we do with that now? Like if we, if there's, because there's people in the buildings pretty much every weekend, isn't there? Between Correct, sports. but they all have keys. We, we do not have a custodian oh, really? on staff on the weekends. Okay. Unless there's an actual event in the, like the auditorium okay. or the cafeteria that there's trash to clean up or um, if it's just a gym usage, the coaches or associations, I believe, have keys. Okay. Um, so, um. But there again, it would be an ability for holidays because right now, you know, when we have, you know, holiday weekends where we're bringing people in and paying them, you know, a, a lot of time, time for, um, I mean, time. I think the middle school, the last building check they did there, it took them 20 minutes and we're paying them two hours. So it's, it's something I think we need to, we need to, you know, once the M&G thing gets finalized, I think once we get a contract it's in place, we, be, we can put it all on the cow for March. And uh, in the meantime, I'm not going to prevent them from buying groceries for their families. We've been paying them for 15 years, but yeah. uh, the point is they've been staying under the radar at audit time because the audit does random vendor checks. Yeah, for, kind of, for that kind of payout, right. yeah. And, is the owner Mark? Yes. And so it yeah, used Mark, to be- Mark Pellicotti. Yeah, he used to be the Birdsboro cop for years and years before uh, he went and started this business. Okay. Well, so, um, I, I mean, I think that that's, if we're, we can save money that way, I don't have an issue with yeah. that, other than do they, do, is there any grievance ability from the union side no. if we're, okay. Because that we always get hit with that yeah. crap when we parcel out duties. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that would be, I mean, I would just want to know from, you know, from, legal that we're good doing that but <laughs> side sidebar to some degree you're saying how are we getting these contracts into a central place i simply told payables nothing nothing gets paid unless it's got a PO, yeah approved contract in an effort to try to catch these things because stuff is sliding by it right. sounds to me like you know up until very recently you, you could have just sent a, 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 invoice, a, a, an invoice into Daniel Boone and got paid. I wish I would have known that before. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you hear any complaints, okay. that's what's going on. I, I, there's the but ways it should be. Pain. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. Key Casey. system. No All right. System wide, district wide key system. <laughs> I had our staff go through and count every exterior door that has a key cylinder in it, in every right. building. Um, just for case in point, I'm gonna get through all my notes here. I have one sheet here that has a tally of it. All right, currently, Birdsboro Elementary has 12, Monocacy has 23, Amity has 20, the middle school has 33, the primary has 12, and the high school has 45. So that is points of entry that somebody with a key can gain access to our buildings. Um, that is way, way, way too many points of entry. Um, uh, the, the thought is there's no need to rekey every single door. Um, we have to figure out what doors we want to give people access to um, to bring them into the building, and then we would put blanks on all the rest. They would still have passive egress out, so in case of an emergency, they, they can still exit the building. Uh, but to get into the building, we limit we limit the flow of people into the building. A for security reasons, um, B for practicality reasons, 
Um, and then, you know, going key card wise, then we can really, once we get the building flows established, now we can really fine tune the flows and then we can do the key card systems at that point in time. Um, I just quickly just threw some numbers together. That is 45. That's 57, 90, 110, 130. It's 145 doors. That seems crazy. Um, some of right now in the school district. There's no reason to put keys in every one of them. Um, replacement cores are 40 bucks a piece. Um, regardless if I buy one or I buy a hundred, 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 hundred of them. Um, the way the new key, the, the the way the new key would be is it's a patent system from Best. We are, we currently have Best almost everywhere anyway. Or we have Best Arrow and then some Yale and some other whatnot stuff. But um, uh, we could then get every exterior door on one key system. The high school would have a master key. The middle school would have a master key. Each building would have their own master key, but there'd be a grandmaster that would open every okay. single one of them. Um, so once you establish that key system, now we can start picking and choosing our doors and areas that then re-key moving forward. We can track the keys, who has the keys, so on and so forth. Um, it's a patent system, meaning um, it looks like a normal key, but in the end of the key, there's a notch. Um, so that key cylinder has a pin. If you have a blank that doesn't have that notch, that lock won't turn. Even if it's cut the same way, it, 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 you can't... You can't go to a hardware store and buy this you key. You have to go to that. You have to order it with the serial number of the key system. Mm -hmm. So we would be the only people with that, with that specific key. Um, therefore, we can guarantee whose keys are what, what keys are where. Um, with that, we have no means to cut keys here. Uh, we would want to buy a key cutting machine, a cop, 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 copier machine. Um, you know, like you see at the hardware stores, or you know, the, the, the do-it-yourself ones at Lowe's. It's the same kind of thing. Um, so, and I just ran these numbers real quick. If we, if we go to Birdsboro, let, let's say we go Birdsboro and we eliminate four doors. Um, we do, you know, eight doors. Monocacy, we do 10. Amity, we do 10. Uh, middle school, we do 20. Primary, 10. And a high school, 20. Um, it's 20, 10, 50. Looking about 3,500 bucks in cores, we can we can replace the cores ourselves because it's just a matter of removing the the core that's in the door, that pulls out. You slide the new one in, and you're done. We don't have to change hardware out. We don't have to change lock sets out. It's just it's just the, the core itself. Then those cores we can keep, and if we would need to use them inside a building somewhere, we can. That has the same type of key system. Um, because there's no sense to re-key the whole building. If we can secure the outside of the building and keep people out of it, I don't care who has keys for exactly. the inside of the building. Yeah. You know, if we if we don't get them in, they, yeah. they can't do anything. Right. Um, so we start with the exterior, and then if we have specific doors and buildings, like for keystone testings and stuff like that, now we can put the specific keys in, and we can track those keys. So we're looking roughly $3,500 for cores. Um, uh, Refurbished key cutting machine is nineteen hundred and fifty bucks. Um, new, they're thirty six or thirty eight hundred dollars. I get the same warranty with a refurbished as I do new, so there's no need to really buy new. Um, uh, so we're looking at a you know an investment of, of approximately not to exceed about six thousand um, bucks to secure the exterior of the buildings. Um, and we may be able to put less exterior doors in. Uh, we would definitely want to talk to the township and, and codes wise and find out from them, you know, are we required to have X amount of, of doors for exterior entrance? Um, I mean, there are doors at Amity that go out to the grass. Why, why do we have a key right. on the exterior of that door? Um, and it's also an area if somebody does have a key, they can get in that building and nobody has a and clue they're there until right. it's too late. Yeah. Um, so, um, it's definitely something that I mean, if the facilities committee wants wants me to really, really start to tear into this, you know, for roughly six thousand dollars, I think it's it's money well spent to secure our buildings because right now, we have no idea who has keys to, to any of the buildings, um, and pretty much Mary Beth kind of gave me a directive one day. She went to a school and couldn't get in because she didn't have a key because she had a key uh, a card card swipe. Um, and she didn't realize that building didn't have a card swipe entrance. So there she was, not being able to get into a school because she didn't have a key. Somebody had to let her in. She goes, 
I want a way to get into every school. You know? <laughs> yeah. Now, is there an advantage to buying the key cutter? I mean, instead of just ordering the keys? Because, because when I have to make cutter. copies, when I have to make copies, I can make them ourselves. I can buy the blanks and make the copies myself. I don't have to pay somebody to cut, cut the keys. But like, I guess what he said is how much is it? I mean, is well, it? Yeah. No, what, what, I, okay. what I'm saying is that once you have a, a copying machine, you know, people use it, they make copies, though, and then they become and then uncontrolled they become, copies. Yeah. yeah. You know, right, exactly. whereas if you're, if you're ordering it, only certain people are can allowed order. to order it. Well, and once you have it to, would be Phil and I, Phil Tracer and I would be the only ones make, making keys. And every key will get stamped with a number, and we'll have a key log for those keys. I'm not. Well, as long if, as you, if you have a control for it, then right. yeah, it's, 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 I, I looked into a soft software system to track it. The software system's like two thousand bucks, and and the vendor said, "Casey, he goes, you can do it with a spreadsheet." You know, no, you, I think our more concern it. was more like, "Oh, they, we have a key cutter. We can just go." No, I'll be yeah. the key Nazi. <laughs> well, okay. Keep it in his office. Yeah. Right. It, it's it's, it's got to be secure. It, the, type, the, yeah. the, and the way I'm going to do it with my guys is. Um, and Phil Tresser, him and I have had many conversations about this on how we're going to do this. There's going to have to be a, a request form filled out for the key, um, and either signed off by the building principal or myself, or you know, it, it, it's all. I have no have to have to sign every request, but the building either we have the request from the building principal for somebody to get a key. Um, part of that with going with key cards is you don't give people keys. Right. right, and you, you can know, control we, their we, access. We, we yes. just control the access, and, and then we're done. Right. Um, you know, so, but until that happens, we need the ability to make keys quickly as teachers come in if, if, they, if they need a key, you know, and, and for us, the other unfortunate part for us to order it, either we order extra keys and keep them on hand, um, or we make them as, as, as we need to, so. Do, like, all teachers have keys to the, their building, or, I mean, I... I I'm not Currently, saying it's right or wrong. I just didn't know how that works. All I know is for the middle school and for AEC, when I'm there in the morning, the custodians will be going unlock doors. Um, but there again, we have a door that's unlocked in the morning. Anybody can walk in. Right. You know, like at AEC, he literally has to go unlock those doors. I think it's by 7.15 or 7 o'clock. He dogs down the front door, and that's dogged down until the kids come in at 8, 8.30 or whatever it is. So... If you had a swipe card system on those right. doors, then you could control. Up north, I use the fob. Yeah. Right. And, uh, Why don't we have, is that, I mean, it's fairly expensive. We've got it some schools. Well, the, the expense of prox cards and that is run the wire in the hallways. Right. And, and we can do that in-house. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're, we, we have, we have a, a software system now that can manage it. Um, it's just a matter of instead of having a swipe card, we change that reader to a prox card, to a, to a key card or a key fob um, Do our system. teachers already have the prox cards? No. They have yeah. some have swipe cards, some don't. And I'm not even sure who has what. Swipe cards are like mag cards? Mag cards. Like, they re like a credit prox. card. Yeah. Like a credit card. And, and the problem was when we had this last storm, this, this front door didn't work because it got moisture in the, in the reader. And it didn't read the the, the mag the mag strip. Yeah, so, they get dirty um, and stuff. But that allows you to control. If you look at that cost to do that. Well, and that's kind of my, my my question to you guys as the committee. Which way do you want me to start really pursuing some things? Because I I kind of, you know, I I'd like to know if if building security if if. If you guys really are, are I like props. I'm, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm more I like, the cards. like a technology yeah. guy. I think keys are. Well, and, I, and I'll tell. I mean, for a couple reasons. A, because I don't care what, what. It always seems like keys get copied somehow. And I, I mean, yeah, no, believe I me, I know how much. I, even when you try. Um, I mean, we had a premium system at work, and somehow people will get copied. You know, they're not supposed to not be copied, but there's copies floating around. And um, and then you have to change. Like, well, I do the same thing. I change the front and the back door because then I know nobody can get in. Well, I mean, <laughs> but, I like I like but, it from the you know from the simple sense. Like, you know, if somebody came in um, our building, they know what time they came right, in. Right, and that's what I and, like you know, with the what, cards. Right, yeah. there's a there's yep. traceability there. To find so out if who's if in. you if you lost your key. Or if somebody comes in here that's not supposed to be in here, we know how they got that mm -hmm. they got in, or we can at least trace lost, it back to the just person, that right? Card. And or yeah, if you need to give somebody access for two hours on Monday and Wednesday for um, karate, you program that card 
for those right. two hours or whatever. Yeah. And um, I, I, the problem is, I guess, is those 45 doors or those 12 I mean, you, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to put readers on all the doors, right? So you'd have a couple main doors, and then the rest yeah. are just yeah. locked. Is that and how so it works? Still gonna that have, you're still going to have to rekey the exterior buildings, For, regardless if you go with right. box cards or whatever. The the, the rekeying of your exterior buildings should be done to control access to to your buildings. So you um, want to so you think they need rekey regardless. I, yeah, I think you almost have to because your 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 keys have been so out of control on who has keys. You know that that's your that's your cheapest avenue to secure your building at this point is to spend thirty some hundred bucks on cores. And if we don't want to spend the, the money on the key card, that's fine. I just I will have to order extra keys right. so I have extra keys and stay on top of that and, mm -hmm. and, and log it, which is fine. I have no problem with that. Um, <laughs> But, I'd rather do and, that. And but to secure your buildings right now, right now you can't secure your buildings. Um, I'd rather have the, the short and the long term. The, the short term solution is what he's proposing. The long term right. solution is the vision of of going to uh, you know card swipe. And that's have fine. You I, looked at I, that I, not magnetic. And what you would do with it yet? Like if you scope that out? No, because I have other ones that I was working on. So that's why I, I sure. you know, I was just kind of, you know, wanted you guys kind of to give me the direction, saying, hey, you know, we, we would we would rather do this and spend this money towards this, and you know, I, I'd rather see the two thousand bucks for a key cutter go towards I doing some prop box cards. Yeah. And to be honest with you, yeah. no, I, I you agree. Know, yeah. Because. I I'm to see you. that and, and get five Karen, five extra keys or ten extra keys. I think at the high school you have they have the magnetic strip. Karen, that right now I have three keys to get into the exterior of the high school. Three different keys, depending on which door you're at. And I literally, yeah. when I stand at the front, and what's funny is the front doors, they're three different keys. These are all work keys, so yeah, I feel your pain. Yeah. And that's only to one building. So right. I, I, have one, I have one key, a car key. Yeah. You have a car key, right? Really this this, this yep. magnetic car I would is love that. Any, any part, ex in, including our server room in our in our. Wow, building. that's right. awesome. So, yeah, our, yeah that's a prox card, right? Correct, yep. HID, yeah. Yep. That's so. the other thing. You guys can do other cool stuff with this, too. Like, you can lock down all your copiers. Yeah, we'll see. And they can't print or until they... Or, or well, and that's what Scott Matz wants to go to because right now everybody, I guess, in the school district has an ID that they put into a computer, into the copier to make copies. He would love to have prox cards that he has a reader there, boom, you, you know, you, 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 get, you get permission on, on the copiers, you yeah, know, we can, so... We can talk. <laughs> I am um, I, so I, I guess it's our recommendation that we 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 record them, but we hold off on buying a key yeah. cutter. And I have to talk to the principals too and find out who would need keys and the costs associated with, right. with buying all the keys. And depending on what they charge you for cutting the keys, it, it may be pay worth to, not to, to, to buy the cutter and we yeah, cut them ourselves. And right. And the, I just, you know, what's the absolute minimum then? As you go forward, what's the absolute minimum you need? Um, yeah. To you know that would be you know converted into uh, right. proximity. And I, I certainly would, not forty four, and, and I, I wouldn't expect twenty either. Right. I would know, figure like school. two or three in each building, depending on how big the building is. Yeah, it's you have probably more, a lot more than that, but because you have loading docks up at the high school, like these guys get in their their little area in the back there. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what the number is, but there's well, yeah, I the other part of recanning the exterior of the buildings, and, and this is what we're going through at Wilson when I was there, was our ring was about three times the size of this to get into the buildings. The fire departments and the police wanted Why a key to get into the building. Yeah. Um, and right now they don't want to have to go to the Knox boxes, you know, to get into a building. They would they would definitely prefer to have the keys you know, available. So I don't know if this township would want to go that route. You know, I mean, I'm not going to offer to them either, but if they come to us and we can say, oh, by the way, here, here's your key that in the emergencies you have to get into a building, now sure. you can. Well, you do, you we know. do have a Knox box, though, right? Correct, but, yeah. you know. Well, it's, I, it's I know. Um, it's, a, it's a key, it's a box that there's keys into the building that fire police and uh, have a key to get into the box to get oh, to the like keys. Oh, it's like a, yeah, okay, like a lock box. Yeah. Right, yeah. but 
I, I know our fire how many one of keys everything too, and I yeah, you can have the Knox box. Well, and, that, and exactly. Some, and of those, just, some of those fire guys are a little correct. Yeah, after yeah. hanging out at the club for a while. State police, everybody, correct. and they were yeah. fine with that. Yeah, they thought it was great. And that's what we were doing over yeah. at Wilson. We were giving them one key to get in the doors that didn't have key card access. You know, so it's just it definitely makes things a whole lot easier. I guess I want to. I just want to see what the cost okay, of the that's fine. for the is. keys. Yeah. But but yeah, I mean, I think our recommendation would be to to replace what you need to replace. But so that's that we can make a good recommend, we should know what the keys are going to cost. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Just so I we just, can like say. Like I said, I just want to know this way or this way. Which which road did you guys really want me yeah. to go? You know. Yeah, and, what, and what's so. the prox cards going to look like? I mean, they're like what three bucks a card or something. So the, the keys that you're going to order, they they have something special on the tip that. No, they can't be copied unless in the, you order them that way. Correct. In the end, there's a, there's a notch. It's about okay. three eighths of an inch long, um, and then there's a serial number that's associated with that key. Okay. Um, only somebody from Daniel Boone can then order the blanks. Uh, yeah, that's you know. Funny story. We have we have one of those systems and the keys. So I said, but apparently because when you do like the whole little bit when our building was built, they gave us the Primus key system. But it's just a regular cylinder in the door, so <laughs> you <laughs> this, the door, the lock itself doesn't have the special thing. So all the keys are cut for a special cylinder, but we don't have a special don't have cylinder. Have a <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. EEC underground fuel tank. Is that an oil tank? Yeah, it exists for heat, heating oil. Correct. I haven't used it. Years. The, the old no, we boilers no. were dual fuel, heated in oil okay. and gas. Oh, wow. Um, the new boilers are gas only. The water heater is gas only. There is no need to have that oil tank. Do you want to remove it? Okay. Or, is there oil in it? Yeah. Not sure. We're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Should I Can we just forget like about it and not say anything? Then you're, then you're liable for yeah. leaks. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it must be in the registry. And we're paying an annual but you're yeah, you're paying, fee you're paying on, an yeah. annual fee for, for an underground, underground, and you got to have an emergency tank. contingent plan and all it's that. It's a ten thousand gallon wow. oil tank. So you got to determine what's. what's and it's in the, the courtyard. <laughs> uh, the back, I call it the back courtyard where the chillers sit. Yeah. Between the chillers and the building. So, what'll end up happening is if the school district decides to remove it, you're going to have to coordinate that. Definitely in the summer times, we're going to have to take the chillers out. We're going to have to remove two chillers to gain access into that area so they can be in there with backhoes and dump trucks and stuff like that. Can't we, like, fill it with foam, like spray foam? Those days are over. You can't fill them with sand anymore, stone or nothing. It's Really? If it had been done when they got rid of the yeah. what well, used I mean, it, they probably could have. I think at the minimum, you want to make sure they get them pumped out. So yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But then if surface water maybe. gets in and they rust, and then the surface water has residual yeah. that leaches out. So, right. but so what's, what's residual, the plan? I mean, what do you guys want to do? Remove it? Stuff. Yeah. I, can, yeah. I can talk to I talk a local to the, company to pay, 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 pay for petroleum. I can give them a call and yeah. see what they recommend. Yes, the DEP will require a bonded salvage company to suck it out. Correct. As long as they're Correct. Ready. Can you get us a proposal? Yeah, I'll yeah. have them just work so, up. Well, that and, and the remove, like a cost proposal yeah, to remove it. Because I think, okay. I'm you're, you're, you're just, about why you're just basically telling us year. what we're going to, we have to look forward to the next few months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be let's close the let's close the EEC again. <laughs> it's still going to have to come out whether we close it or yeah. not. Yeah. Well, the other case is that I were, we have an issue with a walk in freezer. Icing out the yeah. There was a series of emails going back and forth between Sodexo to Mike to Casey and got this icing problem in a walk in freezer. And Casey said, Hey, I've got the outfit out of Lancaster coming over to, uh, to make sure, see what's going to be involved to fix it. So I had to jump in and I said, I just checked the reserve study. It's not it's scheduled. It's not mentioned. <laughs> not scheduled. It's been for 20 years. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Uh, all right, Jim Lighting Upgrade, AEC. That's the that building over there? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that's where he started. He that's where the parking lots. It's, it's been a little busy. Um, 
The gymnasium and the cafeteria, what they have is they have a drop ceiling in both facilities, and then they have a two-by-two two translucent square panel. Mm -hmm. And there is your standard 250-watt metal halite light above that two-by-two two square. Um, a bunch of them are not working. Um, and you can't majority, replace them. Yeah, there's, there's probably a good 40% are, are, are out currently. Um, and what's the why, why? Just age. Just age. The fixture is the light bulb. The light bulb doesn't work. Either okay. the bulb or the ballast. But okay. you might not be able to replace them anymore. We, we can get parts okay. for them. Okay. Um, but the problem is, I don't have a lift. We don't. Uh, we do not own a lift to go up there. Okay. Um, to, 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 to do it. So I would have to rent a lift. Um, of course, my thought was instead of you can't get a bucket truck. Right. Rent. <laughs> um, so my thought was instead of instead of replacing the fixtures and, and rebuilding them um, while we have the lift here, because while we have the lift here, I might as well relamp and put new ballast in every one of them so I know they're done, mm -hmm. so I don't have to run a lift again. Um, or the time it takes for us to reballast and relamp, I can probably I can change the fixture out to an LED fixture. Right. I was going to ask you, the LEDs. Um, LED fixtures, um, the guarantee is 50,000 hours. So if you base that on a 3,000 hour class year for a school district, which is what when they do these upgrades and lighting process, that's what they base on, you're talking 17 years. So they're pretty much guaranteeing you light for 17 years. How much? Um, it's getting there. Yeah, no. <laughs> Try to get to the bottom line. <laughs> it's true, you gotta keep this moving. <laughs> you wanna... The same day he was doing this, I saw him calculating his piecers. He's, he's figured out that he's only gonna have to do this once. And he's gonna... <laughs> <laughs> you wanna... One, two, three, four. There, grab. That was the other thing. They probably have an ROI in the savings, right? Yeah, what I've done is CM3 awesome. Building Solution is the company that I used that we had our, our performance contract with over at Wilson, a um, company I've known for years. They have a lighting guy um, that all he does is light up grades. Um, <laughs> Shannon Kine. You know Shannon? I went to school with him. Really? Very well. He used to work over at um, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Great, very knowledgeable guy. Um, we we put in you know everything in here um, uh, that we can think of. Um, total install the, the labor material by district is my basis on a lift rental. Um, I threw thirty dollars an hour in for the guys um, to to base the the, the hourly cost. Um, so total install cost is twenty five and change. Um, the other part of this is we will be putting motion sensors in for the light fixtures as well. Um, therefore, nobody has to turn a switch on or off anymore. Um, they'll come on, they'll stay on, I think it's for 15 or 20 minutes, whatever we set them for. Um, that's what I did over at Wilson. It works out great. Actually, we just used a fixture like this in the gym and put a motion sensor on the side of it. And when you walk in the gym, it goes one by one, um, turn them on. So you're not turning everything on at one time. Um, so our payback, um, you know, year one savings um, is three thousand. Avoided annual maintenance is two thousand. Um, the MedEd rebate is uh, a rebate that CM3 will file for us. Um, so we're looking. I think it's a seven or eight year payback. I, I, I don't remember exactly where we're where it was at um, total. I think I think it was six or seven years on a payback. Um, well, that is to do the gymnasium and the calf, um, to do both, not just not no, just the gym or just the calf. But that's so for the twenty-five everybody. grand roughly cost. Is that should be the last dollar we spend on those lights for fifteen, seventeen. Well, years. and what would be the cost? Did you figure out what the cost was to just replace the mercury, the the um that was the, the regular the, bulbs and valves? Hang on, I have that because really you got to take that off too, in my opinion. Um, hang on, it's in here. Relamp and ballast change. Um, the lamps and the ballast are 150 bucks a fixture. 
Um, hang There's on. 40 Light. fixtures. For me to relamp and, and change all the ballasts, I'm looking $10,000. Okay, so this is 15 more. Yeah. Okay. And I shouldn't have to touch them for a long, long time. Lauren, is there money in the budget? Well, this would see when are we going to do this next summer? I, I think we would probably end up wait till the, the summer, this coming so, summer. So you know, we, what we're, you would budget for it for next year. Uh, and and the other part is too. If you want to look at the fancy little, just to kind of show you, they have done a full lighting. Um, this is the lumens at each each little location based on the lights and everything. Um, currently, um, we have, where is it at here? We'll be almost twice as bright, I remember that. We were around, right now we're around 17, I think, where the hell was it here? Uh, we're not within, we, we currently are, are, are too dark for Pennsylvania school standards, you know, <laughs> yeah. what, 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 what they say for a gym yeah. as a design basis. Um, the new ones will actually be brighter than what the standard is. Um, and he can go with a smaller fixture. Um, and actually this is, this is the upgraded light cost. These lights were $4,000 more expensive when he initially did this back in October, November. Um, but the LED prices have gone down. So, you know, if we wait a little bit, we might be able to get them even a little bit cheaper. So, uh, but that cost includes his time. That's done. I mean, it's, it's, it's engineered. It's, it's, it's done. It's surveyed. It's right. So from us now, do you want a recommendation? What was the plan for it? I thought you were waiting. That, and that, Anybody have if, you're spend 10, if you're going to you spend, spend 10, 10 anyway, I'd rather spend without the energy. And then you, then you, yeah, you you're more than double the life. Right. Right. Plus the so energy saved. After the first year, your outlay is only 12. Well, plus you're getting a rebate. Well, you'd have to and look so at. So it's just counting down. So I mean, it's it's really. Yeah, the that's down the road. Obviously, it's kind the of a Forty percent outgrade now is because. Right. Yeah. Didn't want to bring a lift in to change it. But. Right. I'm okay with recommending. Yeah, yeah. I am too. Okay. Um, Pretty good salesman. Yeah, tell yeah. Shannon I said. I will. I, I will. I didn't know you know him. That's yeah, pretty funny. We went to school together and spent a lot of time in, together. MEC <laughs> parking lot drainage. I'm trying to find it. And grab that one. Everything's falling apart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We can put an asterisk on that part of our... Uh, MEC yeah. parking yeah. lot. If anytime you want to drive the Monocacy Elementary, drive in, look to your left of the upper parking lot, and you will see the area by the stop sign is wet and has potholes. Or it's um, a mass of ice. Or, yeah, mass of ice or a whole lot of salt. Um, there's a spring that's underneath that, that parking lot. Um, I was told it was there when they built the school, and they never addressed it, supposedly. Um, they got the property cheap. So, um, what is happening now is the macadam is starting to fail due to the ice and also due to the salt. Um, the only way to fix it, the, the, the correct, I should say the only way, the correct way to fix it is um, it's roughly 100 by 40 or 100 by 60 area, um, I have the quote up in my office, um, to remove the macadam that's already failing. Um, it would need to be removed anyway within the next couple of years. Um, then you proceed to dig, if this is the area, if this is the curb, there's a catch basin right here. Um, what you do is you dig a trench, a trench, and a trench, and then you tie these together, you run them into the catch basin, um, and these trenches you install, six inch perforated pipe, wrap it in geotex, um, fill it all with stone, you know, two B stone around it, um, give that place a, a channel for that water to run. It's storm water. It can go in the, in the catch basin. It's right there already. Um, and then they would re over top of it. 
Uh, it was 23 and change, I believe. 23, 23,000. 23, <laughs> yeah, 23, nice dollars <laughs> And what, um, what did that, you say the size of that was roughly? It's about 100 uh, 60. by 60 or 120 by 60. I can go up and grab the quote. Yeah, no, no, that's, quick. I was just wondering. Um, okay. But I can so show you. Is that permitted and everything? I, mean, I was going to say, we, do we need to do anything? It's 19,000 square feet. So you're under an acre. Just or, yeah, I don't think you need any state permits, but do you need to do anything with the township? Probably. And they'll, the other, they'll, be, they'll be township permitting because you're, you're, you're doing remake. I'm, I'm assuming since we're tying into the storm, the catch basin, they would want to know. Um, and also, I, I know for us, they ain't tying any remake commercial lots. We worry about. Um, the grading and everything for the handy, the ADA accessibility yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Well, and the good so. thing is this is up out of the... That area? Up out of the way. Um, out of the ADA zone. I'll just kind of give you a quick little... That's what it looked like when I was plowing. Oh, it's all like ponding in it? Yeah. Like, yeah. And that the white you see is there. Where's the bait down here? Is the yeah, it's right, right there. Oh, okay. Right there by the Where's light. Where's the parking lot? All right. Well, I had better <laughs> pictures. <laughs> no, I know. I well, I mean, there. it's all right. I, I get the, I get yeah, what it is. But it's, it's, it's not good. I mean, we already have potholes. Um, when we plow it, we, we get very careful plowing those areas because we don't want to take macadam with us. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that's going to need to be done, just kind of bring it to your attention. Um, this is something we would have to do in the summertime again because it's the exit of the parking lot. Um, it's it's the one way out right. exit, so um, it's definitely uh, and it, and it's the whole driveway area. Um, but like I said, just just take a cruise over there at some point in time when when there's a lot of water in the in the ground, and you'll see it's just coming up through cracks all over the place. Is this something again that you budget for next year, or what you would want in this year's budget? Next year, this, this is a summer job. All right, so it's really more of a um, planning. Planning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it comes to the point where, you know, do, do we want to put it out on, the, the other part of it is, do we want to put it out on bid, um, or do we want to go through either like a KPN, you know, Keystone Purchase Network, or a TCPN, or, or which, which you know. brings up a point, such jobs as this, when you're considering do we want to bid, do we, have you ever had an architect of record here? I don't <laughs> or you just simply, if you needed an architect, we ran up, we worked through with those doors over in, in Birdsboro, but sometimes you run up against projects like this, and maybe you need a drawing yeah. to do something to provide specs for a bid. And if you had an architect with record in the background, then you only pay them when they work. I would, I would, Brian Boyer did. I, I would um, say, um, I don't know, but I can tell you that the architect that did the last project for the high school, the stadium, and all, I wouldn't give him three cents well, if fine. my I, life ever depended you, on it. I mean, well, he, maybe you I, touch base with the right. township. Here and I would say, I see if I you, know. say you, can RF, you can RFP it and, and see yeah. what you get. Mm -hmm. But it's just the idea. That way you don't have to go out to bid every time. Or, well, or you don't need to. Well, but the point is, sometimes you need a drawing to go out to bid. Seal yes. drawing to bid sure. with. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, or an engineered plan. Yeah. And and uh, perhaps if we had had an architect of record behind the Birdsboro boiler jobs, things wouldn't have gone yeah. the direction they did. I don't believe that we do. All right. But I'll, but I'll maybe we need to look at that. And but can, certainly. But it just when he, he mentioned. Our options with that project, right. that if we if we were um, to go out for bid on our own, we need. We oh, need and you guys rock. don't have an engineer. <laughs> See, I'm used to just calling my engineer and saying, I mean. "Do we, a plan for me. I need to put this out to bid." <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. What you don't have that. Up, up, I keep saying up north. I had, and if I needed something, I called and he'd say, "You really don't need this, or you do need this." And yeah. I did, well, I know KCBA did Amity. They did Monocacy and they did the middle school. Um, I don't know what other architects had done work here for the school district either. So if we do an RFP, anybody I don't know. Who I, see, and I like I don't know if isn't. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know who did the. I forget the guy that did the stadium, but we're not building a building. We're, right. We just need a resource. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. The, kind of um, like calling Brian Subers on a legal match. Mm-hmm. Right, and you probably... Like almost on retainer. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, you probably when you need it, and you know what you're paying rate. for. Yeah. Our engineer's and, pretty and good Andrew at the borough. Brian, that's Brian Boyer. He's good. The problem is that a lot of times they won't, like, you can use Brian Bur- Boyer over here, but a lot of times they won't, they won't, they won't do anything in the, for a client in the in the township that they represent because uh, they can't because right, it's, it's a conflict, conflict. of in- yeah. interest. But yeah. I mean, if you're going to do that, I certainly would well, I know some people I could send the RFP out to too you know that are, aren't around here or that don't work in Amity or um, I forgot or, how I went about advertising the RFP but architects subscribe to these things and oh I'm going to jump on that one pick up some extra work yeah because um, you probably would be better off at something like that going out to bid correct and get you know Especially if you do it, I mean, if you, well, depending on when you throw it out, and they might not have work, they might bite on it, even right. though you're not doing it till later. Right. You know and, and, and it's going to be a prevailing rate job because of the cost. Sure. Too. So mm-hmm. it does, mm-hmm. yeah, it's 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 going to it's just going to be that way. So. Yeah. And it's not as easy as. Well, at twenty three, mm, is that with everything? You got a proposal for twenty three thousand? It's like twenty three and change. Hmm. That's tight. That's tough. Well, wait, didn't they? Oh, no, that's never mind. They raised it for yes. certain projects, but that. Yeah, we, uh, Casey told me that his door job was a prevailing wage. He said, yes, it is. <laughs> so Casey had to call Harrisburg. I called the Harrisburg to get, I wanted to know. And their explanation was, how, how was it now? If, if I replace $25,000 door and frame, that is considered construction. If I replace a $25,000 pane of glass in that door, that is considered repair and alteration. That's not prevailing rate. Well, the you, door you only have to deal with Harrisburg for about two more months. Why is that? Because they're, the locals are shifting. Oh. You're going to be in the Philadelphia local you know, for two months. Oh, that'll be even worse, probably. No, I, uh, we, you know, they, for us, they were used to prevailing wage limit to 100000 for road projects. Oh, for yeah. like, but, but here's the thing. Okay, so we, we stopped doing running, doing it as rental equipment when, when it used to be twenty five because it was like, well, you might as well put the whole thing out to bid and, and let the, the contractor be responsible for everything. Well, when they raised it to hundred, we said, okay, well, we put out our materials contract and then we just do the equipment. Well, when I went to submit for the project for approval, the... The liquid fuels guy says to me, well, if it's over 100 with the material and the labor, you have, I said, but they're two separate contracts. He says, I said, we're only spending $30,000 on labor. He says, yeah, but you have to pay them prevailing wage. I'm like, but the guys making the material at the asphalt plant aren't getting prevailing wage. The guys driving the truck to deliver it aren't getting prevailing wage. What happened with the doors? Because that's they said like, you can't stack it. And I went, well, I'll just buy the doors under one and the install on another. And they went, eh, eh. <laughs> it's the same project. I went, but none of them buy the doors. But, under it, but then it didn't do me <laughs> yeah. any good to raise the limit. It's, it's like you know. Do some doors one year. Some doors well, so he's like, can you break it mob, into separate projects and make it the same room? Yeah. yeah, you do you part of it. You do part of it. Not, not the install. Mm. <sighs> Some contractors are Jeez. Yeah. both side. Yeah, Casey, the Berks County's cut in half when uh, they, they divided Berks County in, in two parts. Oh, really? So basically from well, where my wife works at Berkey, uh, from right, right Trooper Thorns, from there on... Just above them, almost a Muhlenberg south, it'd be the Philadelphia local. Every, Berkey and everything, everything north of that, it'll continue to be Harrisburg. So, yeah, you're not going to get it much sympathy out of the Philadelphia. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. none at all, I'm no. sure. All right, so what are we going to do about light with the flag for the flagpole here? At this the point? LED <laughs> spotlight's going to cost me 1200 bucks. What? It's going to cost me about fifteen hundred dollars to get electric out to it and install it. Because due to the distance, 
and neighbors, we have to have a very concentrated, specialized beam light. Um, Where's so the flagpole? Yeah. It's about 50 feet from the building, 50, 60 feet. So Can we move the flagpole? No, it's now, probably more than that. Do you take down the flag at night? We do, but Mr. Martino would like it up all the time. Correct. So we'll tell him it's going to be $3,000. Would he it's like it be, up all the time? It's going to be closely, probably 2500 to 3000 bucks. Um, so 50 or 60 feet, so you could an LED beam would you could direct it from the building. That's where we're doing. We're not digging it. We're, it's oh, okay. going to be on the building, and, and, and it's got special little reflectors to, to be a narrow shot. Hey, you're a light guy, or you're you know, sound I'm guy. a sound guy. But I mean, it's like the sound, the it's <laughs> just they're the same. But. Um, the do we we currently put the flag up and take the flag down every day? Is that how it River works? Rock is supposed to, but River well, Rock remember. leaves at two and they don't put it up and down every day. So I'm going to unfortunately have to have one of our grounds guys come here every morning, and that's going to be his duty at the start of his shift and at the end of his shift is to put up and take down the flag because I'm not always here. Right. Like I was not here for the last, I mean, I was working the last few yeah, really. days, but I wasn't, I did not get into this building until tonight. You were conspicuous by your abs. I was everywhere, yeah. but Thoughts. it was everywhere but here. <laughs> Local Cub Scout groups, let's get volunteers. To take it up and down. No Come, yeah, they, I mean, I must have practiced that a million times as a kid. Yeah, we used to take it down and put yeah, it up. We're building leases. Uh, really, I you know what I, I don't necessarily have a preference. I'll leave. I, I mean I don't. Does anybody? I mean I don't. They don't put it down every day. I don't be lazy. I don't know. That's spotlight. That's a, lot, that's a lot of money. Seems like a lot of money. Yeah, for a, for a light on a flag. Yeah, I kind of think like. So our recommendation is really just take it up and buy locks instead. <laughs> but well, you can get those. Years. You can get those caps for the top of the pole that are solar powered. We'll make it through the night. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. How about it? I'm just, I just seen one of our people who live behind us has one. Yeah. A little five watt panel on the, on the top. It's fat and it's battery. It has that like the All of our schools, we'd have all the schools are them. lit up, right? All those yeah. flagpoles are lit, right? I'd be lying yeah, to him if I said yes or no. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't know the past, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't know what the... my guess is yes. They're all lit. So what know. are we talking? Rich didn't pick on any other ones. Three thousand dollars for a light. It's a lot of lights. I mean, a lot of locks. Yeah. I think I just my, my personal opinion. I'll throw that out there. I I would I just would say put if we have somebody that can take it put it down and or put it up and take it down that's what i do but if if other members of the whole board feel strong five people of the board feel strongly they want to spend three thousand dollars on yeah. it oh okay do either yeah. of you guys want want to strongly recommend it i'm not strongly no it, but if the two of you do we no can. all right <laughs> i'm out i think it's <laughs> i think it's a silly expenditure okay uh building sprinkler Seems fire pump inspection contracts you have them, Lauren. I think I've, I gave them to you. I've is got this to, saving money instead of you want money? Refresh your memory? Is that what you're saying? No. I, he, I, wants you to, um, he wants you to wing it. No. The, currently, we're paying um, um, there again, we're required by, by code to do a functional inspection of our smoke detectors, strobe lights, and everything once a year, and a visual every six months. Um, Currently, we use Berkshire Systems for that. Um, I believe that cost was 28000 and change. Lauren, if I'm not mistaken. Hang on. I'm, I'm digging. For oh, a year? I'm not not twenty eight. Ten thousand six hundred dollars a year. Per year? Well, I guess per you get a lot, really, when you think about um, it. So um, a company I got to know when I was at Wilson is Pletcher Fire Protection. Um, uh, very good company to work with. Um, he can do everything as that Berkshire Systems can. Um, his annual fee is $7,200. There again, he's a, he's a two-man band. He owns the company. It's, it's him and a helper. 
you don't pay for the overhead that Berkshire Systems has. Um, he's very conscientious, does a great job. Um, I walked through all the buildings with him, um, so he understood um, everything. Um, so there again, it's about a $3,000 savings. Um, Who would pay for the light? For the fire? Who would pay for the light? But, now, our elevator, but our parts. elevator contract's going up, so. Yeah, right. yeah, um, exactly. the light, to yeah. keep looking at the LED project for. Yeah, the yeah. Let's think of that. No, I, I'm. So bad. To do. If you're comfortable that they're doing what is required to do safety wise and legally wise, I'm okay. I, I'm yeah. okay with saving money. Yeah. Defer to Casey if he feels comfortable. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, um, so that is that's the first one. Um, the other one is. The fire pump and the sprinkler. sprinkler testing and inspection services. Um, it's a it's a visual uh, visually inspect the sprinkler heads because it's a different inspection um, uh, from the floor level. Check sprinkler system devices to make sure everything's where it needs to be. Um, you know, uh, there's there's seven items here um, and test the pumps once a year. Um, that is twenty four hundred dollars. Victory Fire, who we currently use, is their their new proposal is twenty eight twenty. And and you said Pletcher can do it. Pletcher can do this. He's certified for for, for, for twenty four hundred. Okay. Um, and and Victory called and there again. This is one of those. The maintenance guys, the, the custodians, said, "Hey, Victory Fire is going to do a fire pump test the first week of February." I said, "And what are they charging us? Who are they doing it for?" Uh, so I called and they said, no, we just come in every year and we do it and we, and we bill you. I said, well, can you provide me a proposal? Uh, so they sent me a proposal. It's 2820. And there again, Pletcher is 2400. And he told me that if he can coordinate the inspections and the testing when he does the, fire the, 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 the visual, um, he said, moving forward, he would like to do this, all the visuals all at one time in the summertime. Then he can save us some money as well. So, um, and the nice part about him yeah. as well um, is he can do all of our backflow preventer testing for us as well. Um, usually, you pay about seventy-five to fifty to one hundred dollars um, per backflow. I think his price is like fifty bucks a, a unit. Um, so, uh, makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah it works for me. That's thirty-eight hundred bucks. So we would just need to get that on the saving on yeah. the. Uh, the meeting to get approved so okay. I can get him in here and get this done. also want to make sure you list what the old contract was yeah. so you can see which way it's going because that, right. that's going to be the automatic question. Right. Right. We'll make it all part of the attachment. Yeah, and this is, that's, that's this. So, okay. Um, that's that one. Um, last year when we signed the Rage Soccer Agreement in February, we were asked to, we we were asked if we were breaking even, blah, blah, blah. We said we'd look at it this year, but they're not redoing the agreement, so we can cross that off. Cross that one off. All right. What about the uh, – somebody else wanted to use the gym for something, one of the music organizations, and they were going to donate equipment. Remember your oh, show? oh that yeah. Is, that's oh, – that's that dropped off. This, this, I think this was my – I had it on one of them. This is, we've had three agendas here. Yeah. I started out with February 11th or January 7th. I remember yeah. looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Right um, yeah. Right the thing is, is, I mean, the, the equipment values that, that I saw, I mean, I'm fine with that. If they want to donate equipment to the music program as cost avoidance, because I know some of the instruments need to be replaced, but I don't know. They were supposed to be here to present. So this Mr. German, yeah, German, whatever. Yeah, no. This xylophone, that's. That's probably a little marked up, but um, well, still, I mean, the, do we? A would be, do we need those pieces? Um, I would defer to Mr. some of the stuff that we were putting together. You know, we had a dad that was a good welder. Okay, <laughs> and we, you know, you saw the music yeah. department; they they donated a new uh, a yeah. marimba, but um, the, some of those xylophones are really old. But I don't know what if this was right. a good one. I have no idea. One of the emails that I saw that it poured on you. Had I think I had it and it forwarded out to the. Well, I didn't have pictures, but. Um, One, he said it looked like the tube has been driven over by the box man. Jeez. Um, Ours? That they're using. Like, well. Oh, that we're using. Yeah. I guess the again. The bags are flat from the kids dropping. 
My question would just be to whoever, and maybe we can, I don't, did they need it? When did they, was this for well, next this year? Back, no, this started back, they wanted to start back in January. Uh, Are they using it? Do we know? Well, this weekend was going to be the last one that they were going to be here. So oh. maybe it's. Maybe it's defunct at yeah, this point. Because okay. he, he isn't here tonight. I realized we had two cancellations. Okay. Well, if they would come back that they want to consider that next year, or whatever, I would just want to know what our costs, what, what, do we have a cost for them using it when they want to use it? And if so, you know, so we can say, yeah, it makes sense or no, like, it doesn't. Like Mike says, if, if it's something we can use and if these values are reasonable, we're open to it. Right. That'll be the response. Okay. okay. We are. I don't know that everybody will be. Some people might say we need money more than instruments. I don't know. It, but. <laughs> well. The instruments, he buys instruments out of the budget. So. Right, I know, I, I agree. I'm just saying. No, I know. You know. I know. I know. <laughs> um, all right, then, do we have anything else? That uh -huh. we, yeah. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Received a phone call from Union Township right, a month the, ago. Um, sort of putting Birdsboro signs in Union Township? Yes. Yeah, okay. You know about this? Well, I just, just Lauren? from what Lauren said. Okay, received the phone call a month ago from Union Township stating that there were poles, the message I received was there were telephone poles falling over along the road on our property. So I called Kenny Templin up at the high school and I said, okay, can you do me a favor, can you swing by? If it falls over, you run with the fire company, let me know what you find. I heard nothing from him, so I thought everything was fine. Received the phone call last week. Sandy received it, Sandy comes down and says, hey, you need to talk to this lady, we call her. Michelle Keogh, Keogh, Um She's asking me about these poles and whose property they're on. I said, what, 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 what do you mean? So she tells me, I said, I thought they were telephone poles. She goes, no, they're six by six pressure treated poles and they're either on your property or they're on the neighbor's property. I need to know whose property they're on. I said, let me go check and let me find out because I know nothing about these. So I drive up to the high school. If you drive up 345 right across the street from 9th Street, where 9th Street comes out, there are two six by six tel uh, pressure treated 10 foot high, 12 foot high poles that are concreted in that the Birdsboro Borough installed. Um, they also cleared the land out of the way. The, when the was brushing that? In late fall, before yeah, February, well, I mean August, of, and September. All the interest of the Birdsboro are getting these poles right. for to put the Well, that's great, but stuff. the Birdsboro should know damn well that they need a sign permit from Union Township. Well, yeah. what I was told from <laughs> Kenny <laughs> Templin, who's on the Birdsboro Borough Council, yeah, he's on is council, yeah. that they got approved by Ken Smith. Well, A, Ken doesn't have the authority, and B, they still need a sign permit from Union Correct. Township. <laughs> so I had a conversation with Michelle, and I said, listen, if your supervisors would like to deal direct with the borough, I'm fine with that. You guys can fight it out yourself. No. I said, as the landowner, if Union Township needs to cite the school district that we are non-compliant, we'll I'll start a chainsaw at the very next. I'll give Birdsboro Borough 24 hours to make contact with you and get an get a extension or whatever, or I'll cut them off. I said, so you need to notify me on what you want me to do. Um, I have not heard back from Union Township yet. Um, Union and Birdsburg don't get along. Correct. Um, <laughs> Union flat out told me that where they're at, they need a variance mm -hmm. because they're too close to the state road and blah, 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 blah. So I said, you notify me what's going to happen. Um, so Kenny Templin sits there and says, well, we're going to do it. We, we got approval and blah, 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 blah. I said, well, Kenny. If Union Township says to me they got to go and you don't want to cut them down or remove them, I will. They're on our land. Sorry. Kenny Templin's on. He's Birds the president Burrow, of Borough Borough Council. Yeah. Yeah. Is he, council. Or he used to be president. I don't know if he's, he's, know if he's president. And custodian of the high school. Yeah. And he's the fire chief. And he's the fire which, chief. And which Templin is on Union Township? Perry. Town? But I don't know that they're related. That, uh, Perry, I don't think yeah, they're related. Different. Different? Well, there might be some lineage there that they share. Who knows? Brothers and well, sisters? But what about <laughs> Andrew Basil's father? Well, let, well I agree. So, so, so this is the <laughs> part. So Rich, Rich and I are trying to make the circuit yeah. to various meetings. Just, well, the main thing we're looking for is 
are there truly any housing developments right. coming along? But it's good. Are we gonna it's have, good PO. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. Just to make ourselves known. And so we made our initial visit to Union Township a week ago tonight. So Rich and I walk in and sit down, minding our own business. Of course, Mr. Basil came in. And uh, first thing on the agenda was what about those, that sign that Birdsboro got on our. Wait, at the Planning Commission meeting? What did they talk about for? Well, Just because they got nothing else to do. Yeah. Well, Shane Cobb was on something. that commission. It wasn't yeah. the supervisor's meeting. Yeah, it was planning and zoning. Pro Shane Maybe. Shane Cockle, he's the planning. Uh, that's he's why. He's now that's the chair. Yeah. And it was Basil, apparently, until January. Right. Because all night long, Basil is just being a thorn in his side that he doesn't know what he's doing, doesn't know how to run a meeting. Which Basil, the dad? Or the, the, dad. Dad. the dad. He's wandering. At the end of the meeting, he <laughs> says to Shane, did you prepare for this meeting? Shane said, no. Well, at least you're honest. <laughs> it's a planning meeting. Right, exactly. You, you, you don't have to so, so anyway, the gist I got of it, they said to their zoning guy to investigate it further. Because he's reading from the code that we as Union Township can violate our own code if it were on our, but it's not ours. It's why they have a right. Big farm. Union, right? Union can't. I mean, the township doesn't have to follow the zoning code. This is why Louis right. Mascara so threw a pig farm out so there. So, so Casey, this is over by like the girl softball field. Is that yeah. yeah. And then in the very back corner. Uh, honestly, yeah. I'm just, dis I'm, I'm disgusted to be a taxpayer in Birdsboro because Borough Council, if somebody did that to them. And they well, would issue not, a violation there's, there's notice. There's not just one, there's two. They, right. they put one on yeah, 724. They would say, you, you didn't get a permit, yes. you need to get a permit. Yep. Yeah. They and the would problem have. is they can't issue a permit because it doesn't comply with zoning. Correct. You can create a variance for anything you want. Yeah, you go to the zoning hearing room yeah. and you pay no. for it. Yeah. <laughs> with the ironic part exactly, of, I, I'm with him. The ironic part yeah, of, we, we walked into this meeting. Now they're the Burke I'm sure they thought that's why we were there. The, about to talk about this right. sign. <laughs> they knew nothing about it until the next day. <laughs> we knew nothing. That's crazy. Yeah, Casey, you marked this someplace and drew them on. That's for There's 9th Street. Yeah, right there they are. So what do they, what do they want to do? Today. Union Township wait, says them, Birdsboro needs a variance to put the signs up, but technically we need the variance because we're well, the landowners. Well, right, but they would be the applicant. They could be the applicant, Correct. but, but you'd have to go with them this, on behalf. Uh, right, on you'd, behalf have to, us, you'd have, we'd have so. to sign off on it. But yeah. So just, just bringing you up to speed on, on that. Um, okay, there's another one. And while they're looking at that, just, just two other things. Um, I was asked. They won't give it to I was asked to get proposals on upgrading the camera systems at the high school and yeah. the middle school. Um, going back to Select Security's, you know, maintenance proposal. Um, there again, I had literally when Sam three was here to do the light. I said to Shannon, "Hey, I know you have camera guys. Can you bring them in to look at it?" Um, they looked at it. They said the cameras are not. They're not in bad shape, you can use them, but the problem is that the systems we have are not very user friendly. Um, they, they can't really access them except for a control room. Um, they're not web based, it's just, it's just not good. Um, so anything we would want to do with camera systems at any of the buildings, you would have to upgrade the front end side of it anyway. Um, currently none of them are labeled. It's just a TV screen with a bunch of squares. It's not saying like 200 hallway or yeah. A wing or E wing. It's just if I had to go in there, you don't know what you're. I, I don't know what I don't know the buildings. I, yeah. I wouldn't know what I'm looking at. Um, there again, we're looking CM3 proposal. I had Berkshire. I had Secure Home in um, last week to look at it. Um, they're going to give me a proposal, and Ber Berkshire Systems is going to give me a proposal as well um, for. Upgrade in the front end, new software, um, refixing what's there correctly, um, and then to label everything, refocus everything, realign everything, just just get get everything where it needs to be. Um, just giving you a heads up, Sam through proposal was twenty six thousand four hundred for each building, um, and I'm, like I said, I'm waiting for Secure Home to come back with with a number. 
and Berkshire system come back for an upward. I'm 90% sure Berkshire system is going to be a whole lot higher than that just because they're not cheap. What um, kind of recording capability? What were you asking uh, for for like recording time? And, that was the other memory? thing. That's usually the big. Yeah. The switcher, the switcher in the. Uh, it's the a, and this may mean a lot to you, being and it's a 4U chassis with four terabyte enterprise level speed drives, um, eight gigs of RAM, 32 terabytes of raw storage with RAID five. Does that make any sense right. to you? Uh, yeah. The RAID five doesn't make it, but I mean the, that everything else you're saying is just memory for um, like. Windows Play, 7, back yeah, Windows 7 Pro OS with dual solid state, 120 gig drives, RAID 1, um, redundant power supplies, dual gigabyte NIC cards, um, uh, a Nexus 32 terabyte camera server. You want to know how long before it, it, just, it writes well, over, I mean, right? It's just, all that is just memory. Right. Yeah. I mean, it just computer, and hard drive just space. computer space. We would have to tell, I think the, the, the point of it was, I think I had to, uh, and this would give them storage, hang on. We discussed that. And I, I mean, all they are is just continuous AVI files. I mean, it, it may be something Scott Matz can say, you know, I have this old old server. Server, yeah, For you, exactly. just how Correct. high the thing is. Yep. Um, so, it's, you know, it's only about... That high. Oh, it would um, sit on a rack. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's rack mounted. So yeah. four, two U's about that big. So right. It's a, the whole thing's about that big. I mean, it, it, all it is is just Service. It's just it's a computer with memory space. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, the line they used to have like tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's just now it's just it was, to, yeah. it was so a pretty line, substantial but. amount of time, and I, I forget exactly what it was. And do those cameras run all the time? Yeah. Are they motion? Are they motion? They're, stas they're almost every one of them is stationary. There's a there's very few that are pan tilt and zoom. No, no, no. I mean, like, are they just on twenty four seven? Are yeah. they motion activated so that they're off unless there's like at night? They're not necessarily I'm not recording. Sure. I think they're they're all static. Okay. None of them. None of them have like an auto pan and tilt and zoom. No, they don't. They don't do any auto panning at all. No. At least they, they okay. didn't. Um, none of them. Well, ours don't auto pan, but ours only pick up when there's motion. So if we don't you're have trying to save, we were right, trying to save that's recording you're, space. That's your, you know, all those terabytes. So we have just have I mean, enough that, cameras that are the, pointing that gets you through the weekend everywhere. Easy. You probably have a good. Four or five days at least of recording time. Especially if it's monochrome, if the it's black and white. ones are all the time. Well, they're okay. digi it's a digital format. Man. Yeah, the current yeah. ones are on all the time. So we would have to do a camera replacement to do the mo motion, motion activate. Okay. Right. And that's, I mean, my suggestion would be if. If, if, if you're going to go with camera, camera systems, replacement, I would and, and, go. And there's another thing, too. I mean, that's another one that, you know, if, if we're going to look at upgrading cameras, you know, what what direction do, do you guys really want me to look at? Or are we looking at you know are cameras a priority for us? And if so, do do we want to look at replacing the cameras? As you know, if it's, we're going to replace the upfront system, we might as well replace the cameras to something that makes more sense and get them where we need them and and that kind of stuff. How much so is that? it's twenty six. It's almost it, it's almost now. It used to be like audio AV guys. Now it's IT. Yeah. Right. Just like phones yeah. were telephony, yeah. now they're now yeah. it's IT. No, even in um, the so it's yeah. just, it's really it, it, it will eventually where your your goal where everything's going is IT cloud based. Correct. Because mm -hmm. um, we have our own floor on our I can each. I can monitor each. my work on my laptop school. computer if yeah. I wanted to. They were talking about no, it's yeah, a static it's idea. That's just, just the front end. There and, that's just the front end. And I can see everything yeah. I want. Really and it's top. crazy yeah. even in, I mean we put our first I mean, cameras in two thousand eight. We just last you know, year or two years ago replaced them and went to the motion and a new set. And you know, it's crazy how much do, better and, and cheaper. And like, you know, <laughs> well, see, the, you know, for what? For the cameras? Can be storage well, you can go right. to different viewings and different specs. And, uh, you know, that's right. what I said. Maybe Scott, you know. Well, and I'm wondering, too, I'd be interested to know, A, how often do they actually utilize yeah. the well, recording? We, we caught that one knucklehead up there yeah. who, who didn't put his hat on over his face until after he looked at the camera. 
Right. I know the high That's school great. uses it a lot. Megan, Megan Weber is actually going to give me kind of a log of, of, okay. of time. Um, I know she's in there a lot with student incidents and stuff like that. Um, I know the, the one day she told me she was in there for about three and a half, four hours. Now, if she would have had maybe a system that worked a little bit better, it might have been 15, 20 minutes. And there again, I don't, I don't know. You no, know? I just meant, um, like, do they, right, do they utilize, and yeah, that's why the other thing too, I think, with with the the motion activated ones, is, and now during the school day, they're going to be on all the time, but overnight and weekends and stuff, you wouldn't, they wouldn't necessarily. Even but, during the day, they're not going to be that. That's like, true, because they're not kids always, in the hallways yeah. all the time, but there's less reviewing. Because right. you're only reviewing times when there's people that right. you're not running through hours and nothing. I see that none of those, none of the cameras we have, that'd be even more cost. Right, you know, but I think if rate. at points when you start to replace them, you should at least consider well, replacing see, that's what, them. That's with where the, you have to look at that vision art, where you want to go. Right, everything's moving towards a web-based solution. So and that's what this is. Right, and, and, and that's what you know. The cameras are going to be that way. Right now, they're not. I don't think yeah. they are. Most of them. That I saw anyway were just you know, still had the yeah. the audio um, video cable. What is it like a BNC connector or something? Well, I'm not exactly. Yeah. But some are still coax. Coax, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Some are some are coax cables. Um, and then the other thing, speaking of the reserve study, one item that was in the reserve study was the rusty high school roof, the metal panels that are that are rusting. Um, I had. Sensenic Roofing come in um, to look at it and give me a proposal to uh, code it based on prevailing rate um, and going through something like the TCPN network, which is what they did the boiler job with. That's one of the avenues where you don't have to. It's it's a purchasing tool um, to do projects. Um, we're looking some substantial costs, about sixty to eighty thousand dollars. How big of an area is it? Uh, I thought we cans of Flex Seal. Yeah, but I, no, I'm pretty sure. Ken, <laughs> but wasn't Ken bucks. aware? Like, uh, no, well, I thought that Kenny was aware of that, and it was something that was kind of getting budgeted or planned for. No, well, I, I, I thought we talked about it. What, a couple what part of the roof is it? It's the. Um, I mean, where where is it? Yeah. Metal roof canopy at the high school. Metal roof canopy. Oh. Mm. Out, out on the walk. Sorry, it's contagious. It, out on the walk, over the oh, sidewalk? Hold on a second. High school. I like high school canopy. Talking about the front entrance of the high school? Why do I have 70 grand in my head and this quote is 24? Or is that the coding? That was the coding of the middle school. I like. Yeah, I know. I, how many elementary has a long, long one of those yeah. canopies? That's got standing seat metal. Yeah. His proposal. I, I, I give it. Here's his proposal dated December 18th. We were pleased to submit for your review. The budget proposal for restoring the metal canopy roof at the high school. Uh, restore the metal roof canopy at the high school budget at $24,000. Um, they'll wash the metal roof and prepare it to receive restoration coating system, prime with Kynar paint system with Fluoro Prime Primer, furnish and install Lasto Elastomeric base coat over the primer, and install two coats of Acrothane finish coat over the base coat. Um, the seventy thousand, I believe, was the coating of the middle school roof or Amity roof. Am it was over at Amity, I think. I, don't know, I have so many things. Well, that that's. I mean, that's. So. It's, you well, don't have to get two rust. other. No, the rust is the high school. The rolled shingle roofing is at the. The build-up roof is at the middle school in, in Amity. Um, So yeah, so I, I'll, I'll verify that um, those costs, but just to give you a heads up, okay. it's because it's, you'd have to get two other proposals, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but, you were, but that would be prevailing. That'll end up being a prevailing rate job as well. Um, is it over? 
it's 20 the, the budget is 24 um, but there again if he goes if we go through the TCPN or, or whatever till they throw their percentage on or KPN and it, it just starts getting expensive you know right but if you get three proposals and we stay under 25 and you stay under 25 you don't need you wouldn't need right, right. to go out under the TCPN or whatever right well, between 18 and 25 yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. You have to do the full bids. I forgot. I have to go out to bid over 19. Yeah. 18, 19,000 CPI. Yeah. All right. Well, Wait so a minute. If it's under 18, you don't need Yeah, you need three phone quotes. Between 10 but, and 18. At, right. But at 18, or no, it's now 19, you or need would change. You need, have to actually go out to bid, like, bid with the full contract, like, publish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that adds. And that's where sometimes yeah. you come up against one architect drawing. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, Just thanks the for all other, the good news. The <laughs> only other thing is, I almost forgot, is. Nope, sorry. You're done. You said, you said that There's last a whole time. lot more here, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> this is the last one. Um, it's actually two, two buildings that it came up in here and over at Abney Elementary. Um, when somebody comes to the front door here, if there's nobody in this first office, they buzz the door uh, like during the summer and then the ladies up in the upper office will either buzz the people in or have to walk down here to buzz them in because uh, we don't have a true a phone system in here right. um, so to go with an IP based a phone system that would come up on their computer screen um, and you'll know more probably about this Mike than I do how it all works and the screen it comes up on um, the way it works is it's IP based. It's tied in with the computer system, with the server, you know, with the server in the building, um, and then you program the system to ring the first computer. Nobody answers within 30 seconds or a minute. It goes the next one, next one, next one, next one, and then they can buzz them in. Um, I was over at Amity Elementary. The way they bring people in there is they unlock their front door all day long, so now you're in their windbreak area. The inside door has a buzz in, all right? But the problem is the person can just come right into that open foyer area and they can go pretty much wherever they want. Um, so talking to them over there, uh, what, would, what would make sense over there safety-wise for the school is to go, and this would be probably something to, to look at possibly school district-wide, an A phone at the front door on the exterior door that the people get buzzed into the windbreak area and then you can control how people come in. Um, especially at AEC it makes sense because now, I mean I was there, she's busy with a kid, somebody rings the buzzer, she just buzzes them in, they come right in. You know, if they're not paying attention that person can be off into the school, um, you know, real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So going with the key cards and key upgrades, you know, that's also something just to keep in the back of your mind that, you know, when you go to prox cards, now you're going to be keeping people outside of the elements where the office people can't see them. Like ADC is a good example. Birdsboro, you can kind of see them, but you're looking through three sets of windows because uh, it has that, that wind, 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 windbreak area there. Um, uh, Monocacy, you can bring them into the windbreak area. You know, and then have a second buzz in, or I'm not sure if monocacy is that goes into the office or not. I forget how that one's set up, but just something to think about. You know, there, there's there's other costs associated with key card systems because now you're going to be keeping people outside, and how you how do you get them in there and control where they're going? Because Dane actually asked me, he goes, can we put a wall in here, and can we do this, and can we do that, and because if you go into AEC's lobby, into their windbreak area, that does have a slide window there. Um, so I said to him, if we put an A phone system in for your outside door, you keep that inside door locked. The people have to come to the window. Mm -hmm. Then your secretary must have them sign in. And we can put chairs in the windbreak. If they're coming sure. to pick their kid up, they the wait. heater's working, have a chair sit in the windbreak area. The kid comes to the office, the office people bring them out. Uh, but I, I know he's going to be putting a request in here probably pretty soon okay. for something along those lines okay. because I was over with him looking at a whole lot of options. I said, listen, just put chairs out here. You can buzz the people in if they have to come into the office, you know, but your staff is going to have to control that. Right. Because uh, I'm not, 
you know, the only other option is to get rid of the window, cut the wall open, make the people come into the windbreak and go right into the office, but now you have to rearrange his whole office because of the way the office is set up. I think, the, I think the window and the windbreak is good. And, and nobody says that they have to have immediate access to the school if Correct. they can get out of the elements. Right. You know what, if you're picking your kid up, you can wait five minutes until somebody's yeah. free. So I for think. a basic... I, you know, for a basic A phone like that, you're probably you're going to be looking around six to seven thousand. The IP based here, you're looking about nine. So, security costs money. I know, I get it. <laughs> I, I just, I think, I think we need, I think you guys are doing good. I think we just have to figure out, I think, an overall plan and direction we're going, so we're not throwing money Correct. after money. Yeah. So. So we'll so, need like 50% per student on that uh, Celtic spirit thing here. <laughs> just make up for it. All right. So um, it's just, you know, if, if, if you guys can kind of, you know, think about what your priorities are too, because I, I would like to have a little guidance on what you feel is, is a necessity at this point in time. Okay. Uh, because I have a list of like 30 pieces of equipment at the high school that aren't working right now. Um, so I'm going to be spending some money up there to get some things working. Um, but you're going to mention the new scrubber for BEC? I could have waited until next month. Oh, I thought you needed it. Well, a lot of weight. I was just going to discuss our next meeting. <laughs> there are equipment needs that I'm going to be bringing up. Mowers and stuff like that at the next meeting. That's the auction. Do you get rid of some of the old? Yeah. Um, oh, oh, just real quick. Um, I was contacted by, I had Deer Country here to look at all of our mowing equipment, to give me prices on trade-in values, just to try to start assessing what we have, what's worth some of what's not. Um, we have a piece of equipment at the middle school pole barn called an aerovator. What an aerovator is, it is a big machine that you tow behind it, big tractor with a P, with, that's driven off the PTO. Uh, it has a drum on the bottom with long, with about five or six inch long spikes, um, and it vibrates. And what that does is, instead of pulling a plug of dirt and grass out, it goes in and it shakes and makes that hole there. It also has a cedar on the top, where it drops seed into that hole, and then that roller also conditions and kind of, if you, I want to say, squishes the ground, but kind of compacts the ground. We do not need that type of piece of equipment here because we're not conditioning soil that we have major moisture issues and stuff like that. Right. Um, we have a plug aerator, a tow behind plug aerator that will work just fine for us. Um, I can aerate the facility twice as fast than the aerator. Um, so when Matt was here from Deer Country, um, and he looked at it, he was over at Exeter Township the other day and they were looking for one. Um, so I'm going to be contacting them um, to see if they have interest in possibly purchasing ours um, as a used piece of equipment. So um, that piece of equipment, brand new, costs I think roughly about twelve to fourteen thousand um, bucks. You know, um, it's a great piece of equipment. Five for footer, What's that? Five footer, sixty inch. Yeah, it's a sixty inch. Um, so and, and we don't need it. Um, and, and, and there again, if I do need one, I can rent one for about 300 bucks a day. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, if I can get rid of it uh, for, and it's going to be worth five, six, seven, eight thousand bucks used because it's it's brand. I mean, it's like brand new. I mean, it's it's like brand new. So. Get more for it then. Well, it's still, it's all, it's still used. You can't you know, bring. So, um, just Sell the kind of. Why did they have? It? <laughs> I don't know why they ever bought. I I was told they Somebody got it when they built the fields over at the middle school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're I'm, I'm just. It, I'm really, just. I would have thought. Yeah. Um. I'm good. With you sure it's ours? <laughs> Do we have? Yeah. Title? Really. Yeah. Are we even allowed? It to is sell? ours. Okay. According, according to the staff here, it, it is something that was purchased by Ken or his father. I forget. Well, but. What do you okay. have? You've got something. I thought this built like first. F-U-R-S-T down in Alabama. Um, don't you have a piece on one of the compact tractors over in the high school? That was it. That was it. That, that's oh, it. you brought it over there. There's also a slit seater. Okay. There's also, we also that's have an overseater too. Was it the high school? Yeah, that's the overseater. All right, now so next month we're dealing with equipment. Yeah. So like I said, I'm, I'm going to be, 
because right. with with the mowing and stuff, we, we have here. we have a lot of equipment, and I'm going to be changing the way they do things. And the guys are already pushing back already, not even before the season started, that it's not going to work. And I, I really don't, I really don't care. Um, I like it. But we need certain pieces of equipment to make that work. Right. Um, well, so the alternative is we. Outsource it. Outsource it. Outsource it. Have yeah. Let's write them over into what's in the court. Casey told me yesterday that the word came back to him, but we're not going to do that. Perhaps, but somebody will. That's, That's right. right. That's, That's right. That's exactly right. Um, all right. I, are you guys good for this Mar the first Monday, March? March 2nd, do you think? March 2nd. Try to 2nd. get back on schedule. When, when's the. Uh, I think, I don't. For some reason, I think. When is the uh, finance? March 7th? Mar I think March 5th. Yeah, I think you're right. I can't believe we're talking about March. Already. I know. So yeah, that's why I need to tell you about the equipment because <laughs> there's some things we need to buy. So. Yeah, is that okay? March what? Second? Monday. First Monday? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Yep. That works for everybody. That works. Okay. All right, let me just go March 2nd, you said? Yes, please. Correct. Yeah. Six o'clock. because I think we we I think we probably are going to start needing some more than an hour, and we missed a couple meetings with weather and other stuff. And Cordy's, or Casey's got two meetings worth there in that other pot. Exactly. Well, so. I have twenty-one items on my. Okay, well, we'll deal with them next one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>